Devereaux is going to pass. No, it's Bishop in there now. It's time the for local sports on the NCW Live Channel, your local TV station. Tonight's coverage is brought to you by Abby's Pizza, Alpine Air, Apple Valley Honda, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Air Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, and Together for You. Now let's head live to the stadium for coverage of local sports on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. Hello and welcome everyone to another exciting night of football here on the NCW Life Channel. Tonight it's Caribou Trail League action. We are in Kashmir as the OMAC Pioneers are in town for a big clash tonight against the Kashmir Bulldogs. I'm Grant Olson along with Brandon Harley. And Brandon, we're a little bit out of our element here in right. Kashmir tonight, but don't you love the atmosphere I do, on, yeah. in smaller schools and football? Yeah. There's nothing like it, is there? Coaching in the Big Nine for 20 years, you don't get a chance to see some of the other small schools around the Valley play, so I'm excited to see the game tonight. I mean, well, I got here probably an hour and 20 minutes beforehand. There's already probably a quarter of the stands <laughs> right. full. Yeah. They have their little party going on out yeah. front with food and everything. It's just a great atmosphere, but this, is a football town. There's no doubt about That's it. That's definitely early 80s with Coach Collins. I remember coming up here a couple times and seeing some games, and it's always been that kind of valley, that feel here. That's true. And, you know, they with uh, Coach Zukowski, they won, I think, two championships. Right. I did one of those. Oh, I used did. to do cashmere games back in 07 and 08, right. and they won it in 08 which is a highlight of a broadcaster's right. career. But this is a football town, and you can feel it here. And this is a big game here tonight. Even though Cashmere's 6-0, and OMAC 3-3, three and three, OMAC has pretty much decimated their last two Caribou Trail opponents, and Cashmere hasn't had a lot of league games yet, so I think this is going to be an interesting one, Brandon. Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that it's a league game down here, it's homecoming, OMAC's coming down here, it's going to be a physical battle like they always are. And I'm excited to see both uh, Kashmir and Omex slinging around the field a little bit. It'll be a lot of fun. When we come back, we'll talk to X's and O's of this game coming up as our pregame show continues here on the NCW Life Channel right after this. Meet the Move Meter from Coldwell Banker. Just enter any two cities and see how a potential move scores based on cost of living and more. Let's make your dream place a reality. Get your body moving. Tune in for Vibrant Motion, featuring low-impact aerobics hosted by Connie Townsend. These workouts are great for all ages. Vibrant Motion brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center, weekdays on the NCW Life Channel. Eight different political campaigns, 16 candidates, three cities deciding their future. NCW Life wants you to be informed when you cast your ballot in this November's election. That's why we're sitting down with candidates across the ballot for mayor, city council, and school board to talk through the issues and help you make the best choice. Look for those interviews right here on this channel starting October 22nd and on our website, ncwlife.com. Back here on the NCW Life channel as our pregame show continues here from Kashmir High School. Do they call this Bulldog Field or is this just Kashmir Field? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking up. It's just Kashmir Rotary Club. I'm looking for a sign myself. It's been a while since I've been here. We'll call it Bulldog Field. I yeah. kind of like that. Yeah. All right, 6-0, and oh, the Kashmir Bulldogs rank sixth currently in the Associated Press, Seattle Times football poll. But as Dan Koontz found out maybe earlier this week, we'll get to that in a second, but maybe that competition wasn't as good as they had hoped it to be early in the season. Right. They've, they're averaging well over 40 points a game and only giving up on average seven points a game. So it'll be a better challenge tonight, hopefully, for the Bulldogs. We'll see what kind of team they really are when they're playing a league team. That's right. And it's not just offense, it's defense. Opponents have only scored 44 points in six games against right. this Bulldog right. defense. And as you mentioned, Brandon, a good offense, 272 points yeah. in those six games. But like you said, we'll find out tonight. I think OMAC, their last two Caribou Trail League games, they just obliterated Chelan and Quincy. And Chelan, not a bad football team no. this year. So no. that was doing something. Really the worst loss for OMAC, and they might be one of the best teams in all the state, and that's Okanagan. Yeah. So I don't know if you can judge their season right. by that. They're always a physical matchup, that rivalry game, just very close, and, and they roll, man. They're, they're a good football team up there. And, you know, Kashmir really mixes it in. A good passing attack, a great ground mm -hmm. game, a couple of running backs with about 250 yards each so far this year, and about 1,100 yards in passing for Kashmir. Yep. 
OMAC, as I said, they struggled early, didn't score a lot of points, but now they're putting up points with their senior quarterback. So I'm anxious to see. They always come with kind of that spread offense. Right. So it'll be anxious to see just what they come out with tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting. They only have one combined opponent. They both played Deer Park, and Kashmir came out uh, ahead on that one, and uh, OMAC lost by two. So that, that'll be an interesting matchup to see how they, uh, they react to those two teams. All right, it's the red and black against the orange and black here on the NCW Life Channel tonight. It's Caribou Trail League action, homecoming here in Kashmir as OMAC in town to take on the Kashmir Bulldogs. And we come back, Dan Kuntz, as I mentioned, was in town earlier this week and had a chance to talk to assistant coach Brandon Wagg, and we'll have that as the pregame show continues here on the NCW Life Channel with more right after this. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. you find it at Saint Full service at a low, low price. Abby's has been around the Pacific Northwest for generations. Yep, our parking lot used to have phone booths, and this amazing hair was considered to be in style. You know what hasn't changed in the past 59 years? Our recipes, hand-rolled dough, and toppings to the edge. That's what makes us legendary. It's back, baby. You asked for it, and Abby's listened. Bacon. Bacon. Cheddar. Yep, this amazing pizza is on sale for a very limited time. Hurry in or order at abbeys.com. Your taste buds and family Well, thank you. Pre-game show continues, getting ready to uh, watch the OMAC Pioneers kick off against the Cashmere Bulldogs. Dan Kuntz alongside an assistant coach, because Coach Bremer, well, Coach Bremer's a little busy right now prepping the team for the Pioneers. Indeed. Uh, you know, we're very excited for this matchup. We know what it's going to mean to our program and our team. Uh, obviously, we're kind of dealing with the distractions of homecoming, but the boys seem pretty uh, fired up for this opportunity. This team has not really been challenged this year, even in your non-league games. It kind of ran right through the competition. Then you took care of Cascade without a great deal of difficulty in Peshastin last week. What, nine different guys scored. Is uh, is keeping the guys motivated since they seem to be on cruise control? Is that something that the coach has been uh, concentrating on? Uh, I would say at this point the boys are definitely focused and ready for this game. We've been looking forward to this one for over a year now. And, again, it's homecoming, so the boys know what it means and what's at stake. And you finally get to play a little competition. Nothing against the folks you've been playing, both in non-league and league, but uh, OMAC is another level as far as what the teams you've seen on your previous six games. Indeed. Well, they're the reigning conference champions, and so we, need, we know we need to bring our best game to have a chance to beat them. Uh, OMAC and Cashmere have two things in common as you look at the rosters. Pretty young uh, and yet uh, quite successful. Yes, we've been able to kind of develop a program where we're bringing a lot of young players in, and it kind of is nice. We get the opportunity to try out some of these young kids as freshmen and sophomores, and as of right now, I would say our team is mostly made up of sophomores and juniors. And they're seeing a lot of playing time, Coach. Uh, well, they're good. So, yeah, we're going to play them. Uh, OMAC, pretty much the same way. Not a lot of 12s you see on their roster next to their names, not of 11s and 10s, and a couple of 9s, too. Well, Coach Sackman, again, has done a really good job with that program as well. So we know they're deep, we know they're ready, and we look forward to the challenge. Cashmere's offense has been well-rounded this year. Even special teams uh, has been uh, outstanding this year. What, what, you, what are the strengths that you see from the Pioneers from up north? Well, their quarterback is maybe the best player in the league. So it's going to be a tough challenge. We're going to have our hands full, and we're going to just do what we can. We, we like our defense. We like uh, the boys that we have, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, well, good luck tonight, Coach, and hopefully I won't get run over by a football player behind me. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. If I break a leg, uh, the insurance won't take care of it. Won't do that. More on the pregame show when we come back. How's it going? Uh, getting better, actually, thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions, and that ibuprofen's a good option for me. The risk of addiction. 
it's not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. Brent Olson and Brandon Harley back with you at, we're going to call it Bulldog Field here tonight as our pregame show just about ready to wind down. The uh, team's being introduced on the field. As you would expect, a great crowd on hand, Brandon. And I think that's probably natural for here in Kashmir. Good yeah, crowd. Definitely. I'm sure OMAC brought a fair amount of people down as well tonight. Yeah, I've seen a few OMAC fans down there by the concession stand. You're right. So we'll see a really good Caribou Trail League game here tonight. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups, and they're brought to you by TC Slingers. Let TC Slingers save you time, money, and labor with their conveyor application. Call for your free estimate today at 509-885-2269. TC Slingers of Wenatchee, your landscape placement company. All right, we will begin with the visiting OMAC Pioneers. Head coach is Nick Sackman, who is also the athletic director at OMAC. We'll start with the offensive line. At tackle is Noah Marigo, big boy. At one of the guards, Xavier Cordona, he's a senior. A couple of sophomores then on the line as well. Landon Bagby is a sophomore as well as Talon Kate. And then the right tackle, a senior, Wesley Carden. Now the specialty players, quarterback Bo Sackman, the son of coach Nick Sackman, he's a senior. Uh, and a really good trio of running backs. Eli Allen is a running back, a sophomore. Joshua Busco, also only a sophomore. Going to keep our eye on him. At wide receiver, and we mentioned OMAC likes to run that wide open offense. Jesse Garcia is a junior at wide receiver, along fellow junior Tegan Mullen. And winding out the wide receiver core is senior Caden Devereaux. And now for the homestanding Cashmere Bulldogs. First on the offensive line, left tackle is Prin Fox, 6'2", 255-pound sophomore. He'll be alongside left guard Josh Maros. He's a senior, 6'2", 210 pounds. The center, also only a sophomore, Joseph Acton, 6'2", 200 pounds. Now the right side of the line. At right guard is Oliver Kearns, 6'2", 280 pounds. And at right tackle, Brody Larson, 6'2", 235 pound junior. At tight end is Dalen Smart. He's a 6'2", 205 pound senior. In the slot, Isaac Zavala. Again, only a sophomore, 5'7", 135 pounds. At wide receiver, Logan Spies, a sophomore, 6'1", 165. He'll be joined by Trey Smith. He's a senior, 5'10", 175 pounder. At running back is Tyler Peterson. He'll start tonight. He's a senior, 5'9", 165 pounds. We're going to see at Brandon, I think, a lot of A.J. Lawson and also Thomas Bergen tonight. They each have, as we mentioned earlier, about 200 and some yards this season. So it's going to be a ground game, I think, a lot for Cashmere tonight, but we'll have to wait and see. And doing the handing off and throwing the passes for uh, Cashmere, he's only a sophomore, Rylan Hatmaker, 5'9", 145 pound. Head coach for Cashmere is Brian Bremer. So it'll be interesting to see the contrast between the sophomore co quarterback for Cashmere and Sackman, the senior quarterback for OMAC. So that, that'll be an interesting kind of contrast tonight, Brandon. Yeah, you know, you hear great things about Ryland Hatmaker and he can sling it around the yard, but at the same time, they're pretty balanced and be able to run the ball. And, uh, with uh, with Omax odd front, we'll see how that uh, that re re that response is, how they fill those uh, those run fits, and we'll see if Cashmere. You know, you don't see a tight end listed as a starter a lot. No, That'll be that, interesting yeah. to see tonight how they use this tight end, and even the slot guy. Uh, that'll be interesting as well. Yeah, they uh, their their base eleven personnel, one running back, run tight end here in the starting lineup. Is a little bit uh, the traditional spread offense that we, with the tight end. You see that from time to time. So, right. looking forward to seeing how they utilize him. Maybe as an extra blocker. I, I, I haven't watched many Casper games, so I can't tell you how often he's used. That's right. So, you know, we mentioned a good, a balanced uh, rush and passing attack for Cashmere so far this season. In fact, on the ground, 1,069 yards through the air, 1,140. So that's about as balanced as you get right there, Ryland. Hatmaker, the sophomore, 1,115 yards and 18 touchdowns in six games for the uh, sophomore. So he's averaging about three touchdowns a game, and they had a lot of blowouts early in the season, including yeah. last week in the Pear Bowl against Ca Cascade. Yeah, that was a big number. And uh, when you're averaging 45 points a game on offense, uh, you're going to put it in the air a few times. Unbelievable. Yeah, Cashmere has outscored their opponents 272-44. to 44. 
total offense so far this season. Kashmir, 2,209 yards to their opponents, 720, and that is a big difference. But I think it's going to be a little bit different here tonight. We'll have to wait and see. OMAC is in their away, white, black, and red, while Kashmir in their home blacks trimmed in orange and black. Atmosphere's great here. It's homecoming night here at Kashmir High School, so we'll have a little bit of an extended halftime here for you. And we'll bring you as much of the halftime show as we can here on the NCW Life Channel as well. Once again, the Associated Press latest poll in Seattle Times. Kashmir ranks sixth in 1A football. The number one team, and I believe <coughs> we talked about it, Brandon, at least two or three time defending champion Royal yeah. sitting on top. All seven first place votes at 6 and 0 right yeah, now. They're going to be a tough team to beat. They're a machine down there, and they, uh, they are tough to bring down. All right, Kashmir will kick off, won the toss, and will receive to start the second half. And here's the kick. And it's bobbled at about the five, and he touched his knee down, and that means he's down right there, and that's where Omak will begin their first possession. First down and 10 for the Pioneers. Ten for the Pioneers. Just underway, great to have you along tonight. 11.57 left to go, just underway first quarter. Tough way to start there with a little bit of a slip. He had, a, had to get a few yards on that return. To Regular grass, grass here yeah. in, Am <laughs> in Kashmir. Yeah. So. All right, here we go. Omak with the football. Bo Sackman and shotgun. The quarterback for the Pioneers. I think it was a busted play. Now he's going to run it. Comes left side and then slides down across the 10-yard line. That'll yeah. be a gain of four on that carry by Sackman. A little delay on the snap. It, it, I wasn't sure if everybody was on the same snap count there, so it, it may have been. A it did look. There. It did look like that. It really did. They're in zero personnel with no running back right now. So three receivers split out right of Sackman, two to the left. Five receivers in this offensive set for Omac. Motion man is Busco. The handoff, and it will be close to a first down. It's a gain of about three. It'll bring up third down and one. The basic fly sweep there, which is a good play out of that empty personnel set to, to see how Cashmere adjusts to that. You know, unfortunately, Brandon, we didn't have heights and weights for the OMAC. It looks like they've got a pretty stout offensive line. Like I said, we don't know exactly right. the weight, but Sackman shotgun on this third down and short. Handoff, left side, nowhere to go, and it's a keeper up the middle. It faked me out. Sackman, will he get there? It's going to be awfully close to that first down marker, and it is. It's a good-looking power read play. The quarterback has the option to read the end man and give to the, the fly sweep guy. It's a, it's a great play, very difficult to defend. Really nice fake that time, but it's not too hard to fake me out, I guess. Sackman shotgun. Empty backfield once again on this first down and 10 for the Pioneers. Looking left side, wings it along the sideline, and just getting his hands on it is Cade Wilkinson, the senior, 6'2", 195 DB, and just got his fingers on it. That, was, that pass was there. Good-looking pass for that first attempt. Yeah, like you said, it was just out of the hands of him. Could have pulled that in, I think, if he had had a, a little bit more time to look for it. So that'll bring up second down and 10 now, Omak. Ball is at their own 17-yard line. Sackman, shotgun, looks right, goes over the center of the field. A dangerous pass into double coverage. It was there, but like I said, double coverage, and it goes incomplete. Like the way Sackman kind of wings it around the field, Brandon. He's got a pretty impressive arm. Not bad size either. Like I said, we don't know, but he looks like he's got fairly good size no, out he's there. He's certainly athletic, and he looks good. That's just a basic slant pass. He tried to shove it in there, a little tight window for the, the receiver, and he got hit hard. Got that third and long coming up now. Let's see how the Cashmere defense responds here. Here's Sackman. He's going to roll to his left, looking downfield. Comes right wide open. Tegan Mullen has open field across the 50. And he is wrestled down or wrestled at the 50. And he'll be out of bounds at the Cashmere 49-yard line. Gain of about 32 yards on that play, Brandon. And that was a 
beautiful design play. It was. A real roll out to the left, throw back. That's a sneaky way to get your guy to cross the field. The defense has to account for that guy. So, Omak into Cashmere territory now. First down and 10, 9.52 left first quarter. Low snap ball still on the ground, and Sackman does recover it just as he was being converged on by a host of uh, Cashmere defenders, including Pryn Fox, the big 6'3", 255-pounder. That's a loss of about six on that play. It'll bring up second down and about 16 for Omak. Beautiful night for football here in Kashmir. Walking across the field before the game, a little wet, a little damp. It's that time of year we get some dew on the field. So Boy, it takes a long time for it to go away, too. All right, here we go, second and 16. Sackman flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his right, still looking for somebody open, and then just throws it away. A late hit over on the far sideline, I believe, right at the OMAC sideline and at the down marker. That really didn't need to happen for Kashmir, but it's kind of hard to... You know, slow that momentum up, too. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it was a pretty easy call for the White Hat to make there. Only a gain of about two on that play for Sackman, but it's going to go a lot more than that with this personal foul and that late hit. Omax center Landon Bagby, a sophomore there. He's going to have his hands full. I watched his last play with, uh, I think, Brody Larson just pushed him back about five yards, so. That That'll will be, be something to keep an eye yeah, on for sure. That prior low snap made me wonder if uh, you know you got a sophomore starting on a Friday night with a big nose tackle in front of you. That that can affect your game plan for sure. So he's so worried about getting out of his stance and blocking that he's not worried, so worried about getting the snap <laughs> well, back to the quarterback. It's a philosophy that a lot of defensive coordinators like having that nose tackle because you have to account as a center. You, as soon as you snap that ball, you got to get your block right. off, right? So. So the referees. Uh, conference in the middle of the field i think they're trying to figure out where to spot the ball they've got it right now at the 40 yard line and that would be a 15 yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage was was that the uh, 45 of omac so let's see what the uh, huddle's all about here Nine minutes, eight seconds left to go first quarter. We are in beautiful Kashmir tonight for Caribou Trail football action. The OMAC Pioneers are in town to take on the Kashmir Bulldogs. And OMAC putting together a pretty nice drive right now. This will be the ninth play of this drive. They took the opening kickoff and have moved it all the way down from their seven-yard line. So it looks like they're going to settle on the 40-yard line of Kashmir like... It should be from the previous line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and about one. Remember, OMAC had first and 16. The second, 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 second and 16, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's second and one for OMAC. Trips left side, two receivers right. Again, five receivers in this offensive set for the Pioneers. Sackman going to keep it why not lots of room up the middle of the field cuts it outside he's at the 20 down to the 10 the 5 touchdown Omac 40 yards for Bo Sackman QB power they had a great down block by the guard center combo there as the uh, the right side guard pulled around and get a kick out the quarterback read that perfectly and then just let him be an athlete at that point Really nice drive by the Pioneers nice. to start this. The way they started off with that uh, muffed uh, kickoff. Right. You know, that's a, that is a very nice drive. All right. On for the PAT is Matthew, Qu Matthew Quezada for the Pioneers. Try and make this a 7 nothing ball game here in the first quarter. Holds down, there's the kick, it's up, plenty of distance, and it's good. 8.57 left first quarter, early on, it's OMAC 7, Cashmere nothing. We're back to Bulldog Field in one minute. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. 
and you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. This is Grace, and this is her world record holding guinea pig with an iconic name, Abby. She currently holds the Guinness World Record for the highest bar jump by a guinea pig. I ride horses and I jump, so I kind of thought it'd be interesting to teach my guinea pig to jump like my horse does. One day she came out of her room and looked at us and I said, did you get it? And she said, yeah, we got it. After we won our award, we came to Abby's to celebrate. 93 yards, 2 minutes 54 seconds off the clock, highlighted by a 40-yard Bo Sackman run. And we've got an onside kick. It looked like Kashmir may have fallen on it. I love the call right there, Brandon. Riley Game, a little on the road. And Kashmir did come up with it. A big fumble recovery for the Bulldogs there. As Kashmir now will touch the ball for the first time. It's a confident call by the OMAC coach there to... It's telling your defense. I really like that call. It, yeah. Cashmere will have good field position now. In fact, great field position because of that onside kick. They'll have it at their own 41-yard line. Now it's the sophomore, Ryland Hatmaker at quarterback. Tyler Peterson in there as well at running back. Shotgun, Hatmaker, quick pitch. It's around the left, or the right side, rather. Lots of room past midfield into OMAC territory. Logan spies on the carry. And that's a Bulldog first down. That's a gain of about 13 yards on first down for uh, Cashmere. We might have a shootout here tonight, Brandon, where these offenses are moving so far. Yeah, I'm impressed with the uh, pre-snap pre motion and getting some, uh, some leverage to the outside there on those runs. First and 10, Bulldogs. 13 yards on that first down play. Once again, it's Hatmaker at quarterback. Quick pass out in the flat right side. It's to Isaac Zavala. A flag comes down. I think we're going to have a late hit on this side of the field as well. Zavala picks up about four on that play. They're going to tack some more onto that each side now with a late hit here early on. Pretty easy call right there in front of Kurt, our uh, line judge on this side. Both uh, calls were pretty easy, actually, yeah. for those late hits. Yeah. It's a face mask and not a late hit. 15 yards any way you look at it. And that'll give Kashmir some fantastic field position now well into OMAC uh, territory. As the referee steps it off and places the ball at the 27-yard line. So Kashmir in business here. First down and 10 deep into OMAC territory. Down 7 to nothing here early on. Rylan Hatmaker, shotgun. Handoff around the left side. It's Zavala again, and he has a lot of room around the left side. Inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line, and that will be another Kashmir first down, gain of 11 on that carry. Great blocking around the left side of that line for Kashmir. Allowed Zavala. He's got some speed, too, so we'll keep an eye on that. But Kashmir now first down and 10 at the OMAC. 17 yard line yeah, that fly sweep looks like an easy play to run but you have a you have a little belly as soon as you get the ball the bubble out there to make sure that end you get around him and that, that's a great looking run by his ball there hat maker pass out in the oh. flat and nothing doing stays on his feet might as well have gone down and that's tyler peterson and omac read that immediately and that is going to be a gigantic loss for cashmere all the way back to the 29 yard line a 12 yard loss for the bulldogs there so he was setting up for the double pass there i don't know if you could see it it was the lateral pass they had a receiver open in the end zone and he just wasn't able to get it off omac did a good job of sniffing that out boy a second down and 22 now what do you do here his hat maker in shotgun with peterson behind him Bad snap. It's Hatmaker grabs it. Peterson is hit hard, and he's going to take another loss. Great convergence 
by the OMAC defense, led by Xavier Cardona, the defensive lineman, a senior. Really good penetration by the front of OMAC there to make them really earn it here. They have loss of two on that play, so that's minus 14 yards the last two plays for Kashmir. And now it's third and forever. Yeah, ball is, so <laughs> sorry, spot, third and 24, man. There's not a lot you can call here. You got to no. stick to what you're good at. Hat maker over the middle. The pass was there just in and out of the hands of Trey Smith, the intended receiver. And that goes incomplete. And Kashmir now with the ball at about the 40 or 32 yard line. Well, I believe you got to punt it away here. Just pooch it, don't you, Brandon? Or yeah, it really and, depends on who your special teams are. I, I mean, guess so. Definitely looks, uh, out of fo a field goal range. And, uh, you know, with this position here, maybe we see a quick kick here. Kashmir's going to go for it. At least all appearances say they're going to go for it. Hatmaker, no, it's a quick kick. Not a bad boot either, but it does go into the end zone. And that will be a touchback. So six plays for Kashmir and a punt. And that will give OMAC back to football in an impressive drive on their first possession. Nine plays, 93 yards. <clears throat> and Brandon, it didn't take them all that long, two minutes and 54 seconds. No, let the, the quarterback there, uh, uh, what's, what's Bo Sackman, yeah, he's uh, an athletic kid. He read that last quarterback power perfectly and then was off the races. So first down and 10 for the Pioneers at their own 20-yard line. 6.49 left to go first quarter. <coughs> Sackman looks right side, had a receiver there, and in and out of his hands, and it goes incomplete. That was an RPO there. He had the uh, green light to, to throw the screen. You look for the matchup there. The lineman was pulling for him, and uh, he had the option to run, and he chose to pass, as most quarterbacks have to do. <laughs> That's the problem with RPOs. It, uh, quarterbacks are greedy, and they want to get the pass. In. <laughs> so to bring up second down and 10 now. <clears throat> and Sackman a called quarterback keeper up the middle. <clears throat> he is on the way, 40-30, and he is going to score 80-yard touchdown run for Bo Sackman. Once again, just a perfect quarterback power there. No, he didn't actually even have to read. He had to actually uh, just make the decision to run. And once again, you saw his speed breaking wow. away there. 80-yard touchdown run for Bo Sackman, his second of the quarter. He's at 120 yards rushing <laughs> on two carries. Actually, I should say 125 on uh, four carries. Right, right. Caseda again on for the uh, point after try for OMAC. Kick is up, a low line drive this time, and it is good. And wow, just like that, 632 left to go first quarter. It's OMAC 14, Kashmir nothing. Back in 60 seconds. Kunz amir das Problem Saga. Meinen Zylinder überschwin. Flute, ich habe mein Fuken velour. Keine Sorge. Global Car Care. We speak your car's language. From Schlusen. Hey, you. Well, I got a leaky transmission. My head gasket's shot. And I could use some new brake pads. That dog don't hunt. Global Car Care. We speak your car or truck's language. You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event. That old back drive didn't take long. Two plays, 80 yards, 17 seconds off the clock. Another pooch kick by Omac that goes out of bounds, and that's going to give Kashmir some great field position. And Brandon, what's Omac doing up front to allow these big, wide-open holes? 
Well, they're spreading out the Cashmere defense. The five DBs of Cashmere are manned up on the outside, so that puts a lot of stress on the linebackers to spy the quarterback. And it's just your basic power blocking. You, know, you got your deuce blocks with, or tray blocks, I'm sorry, with your guard center combo down, and you got a pulling guard. The quarterback's been patient, reads that pull, and then he hits the gas, and you saw what happened twice now. <laughs> and OMAC doesn't look like a 3-3 three and three team right now, no, that's for I'm, sure. I'm impressed with their game plan. They're, they're spreading out the field and making uh, making Cashmere's defensive line, their, their front seven there, or front six, I should say. So with that kick out of bounds, once again, Cashmere, their last drive began at their own 41, and this one will be... Must have been a penalty there. It, it, yeah, they kicked the it right out of bounds. So, 40s. Isn't that yeah. a, generally a, a certain spot they spot it at when it goes out of bounds? Uh, if, if it, <laughs> it's got to go 15 yards. Oh, I, I, I forget gotcha. The, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of rule there. So it's 15 from the where they kick it. So the 46-yard line is where Cashmere will have it. First down and 10. Handoff bobbled a bit around the right side. It's Zavala, who's been a. Pretty much the offense so far tonight for Kashmir and a nice gain all the way down into OMAC territory. Going to spot him down at the 36-yard line. They look really good on that fly sweep, and it was a little bit of a bobble right off the get-go there. I was a little one, uh, concerned that it might be on the ground, but he was able to keep it reeled in and get that corner. Yeah, sophomore quarterback, too, so you just don't know his nerves, what are ha what's happening right now. We're talking about Rylan Hatmaker, but looking good so far. Zavala in motion this time. It's going to be Peterson right up the middle, lowering his shoulders. It's not Peterson. Yeah, it is Tyler Peterson. Excuse me. A short gain up to the 35-yard line. That'll bring up second down for Kashmir in about seven yards. Omax defensive front, uh, their linemen there are getting a really good penetration up front, making it running inside the tackles very difficult for Kashmir. They're, they've had more success running outside the tackles. Let's see what they do here now on second down and seven. Clock running, 546 left in the first handoff. It's Peterson, big hole right side, cuts it back upfield, 20, shakes a block, 10-5, the touchdown, Tyler Peterson, 33 yards. Really nice counter play back away from the sweep motion to the left. Good call by Coach Brummer there to take advantage of Omak's over pursuit. That's a great point right there, Brandon. It has been that tonight. When you stretch the field on those fly sweeps, the, the defense has got to honor that. And sometimes after two, three, four of those, the defense gets to flow and you want to come back and counter the other way. Right. And there you go, 30 yard touchdown. And the kick, left-footed kicker, it's up, and it's good, Landon Baker. And with 5.39 left to go first quarter, it's now OMAC 14, Cashmere 7. We're back with you in 60 seconds. Stay with us. Allergens. You can't see them, but they live in your carpet and your air ducts. Call the experts at Clean Air Connection for a clean, healthy living environment. Experience, education, and the right equipment equals the best cleaning job possible. Call Clean Air Connection today. Pet dander, allergens, dust, and pollen? Trust your home's carpet and duct cleaning to the experienced experts at Clean Connection. This locally owned family business educates their staff and uses only the best equipment. Call Clean Air Connection today. When you call Dixie Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dix today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Rheem Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. All right, we are back, 539 left in the first. That scoring drive for Kashmir. Three plays, 54 yards, 56 seconds off the clock. A 33-yard run by Peterson, point after try, good. And we are at 14-7, to seven. and here's the kickoff by Baker and Kashmir. A sidewinder that it goes out of bounds, and now Omak will have some great field position, I believe, at the 40-yard line. 
We joke, Brandon, a little bit about this might be a shootout, but there might be no joke about it. It's looking that way. Yeah, definitely from the get-go, I, I wasn't sure really what to expect in terms of how the defenses would respond, but, man, it's been a track meet so far. It's still a little under six minutes to go in the first quarter. <laughs> And not much through the air. It's been all on the ground, both teams. A few swing passes for Kashmir, but that's been about it through the air. Yeah, they had that shot in the first drive where they were going to go for the, uh, the, the double pass uh, lateral to the, re- the receiver to try to go down. That could have been a touchdown for them, but right. the, the OMAC defense sniffed it out. And we'll see again. OMAC's coming out in their zero personnel, stretching <clears throat> that field wide for the Kashmir D. Five receivers again, as Brandon mentioned. First and ten, Sackman, and he's not going anywhere this time. Kashmir snuffed that out, and it was big 77 on the stop, Prin Fox. That was another uh, QB power. He had nowhere to go. That was actually pulled down from the backside, so missed assignments up front. Allows Kashmir to go second and long. Right. Once again, empty backfield. Three receivers left side. Sackman shotgun. Gets the snap, big Screener. rush by Cashmere. Screen and nothing doing. Logan Spies read that all the way, and that'll be a loss of about a yard on that play. Cashmere defensive backs are playing man coverage, and when you have that, that receiver screen that comes down the line and the DB's sniffing that out, you have to have a lineman get up in that guy's grill, and that's a tough play for a big lineman to get you a little bet. DB, pick him off, and he wasn't able to do that there. Good defense there by Cashmere. Third down and 11. Can somebody hold here on third down? It's Sackman and shotgun. Empty backfield again. Kashmir bringing the house, and he's got a receiver that was on his stride down the field. Devereaux. Caden Devereaux dropped it, and that will go incomplete. Boy, that could have been a big hitter right there. Yeah, that was six. Hit him right in the hands, and uh, unfortunately uh, for Omac. They'll get another second chance at that one. Pine, uh, the Pioneers not exactly rushing their punting unit out either, so we'll see what happens here on fourth down and 11. You wouldn't think that would happen here. The ball's in your own territory at the 35-yard line. <laughs> Might be a quick punt yeah, maybe or something, they, Maybe too. they have it in their bag, too. And, you know, uh... Sackman again, back in shotgun, fourth down and 11. I don't think he's going to punt it away. In fact, he's going left oh. side. That's that same play I think they scored on earlier. It goes incomplete. So Omak going to turn it over on downs and give Kashmir some excellent field position at the Omak 35-yard line. You're exactly right. They're running that same play. They bunch together, half roll to the left, look back. Man coverage there. They didn't get lost this time. And ball was just out outside of hands there <clears throat> interesting call there from your own 35 yard line that's some confidence in your defense but boy you just gave up a 33 yard run so yeah we'll see if omac makes some adjustments on how the, how their front covers that once again it's hat maker quarterback handoff why not zavala he has had that right side all this first quarter gets another nice gain across the 30 I believe to be marked down at about the 27-yard line. Nice gain of eight on first down. It'll bring up second down and a a long two for the Kashmir Bulldogs. I think that's been their uh, first play on all three of their opening possessions of of each drive there, that fly sweep to the right. Peterson in the backfield along with Hatmaker. Why not Zavala again following his blockers? Nice spin move, and that... Gets him close to the 25-yard line. He's going to be marked down at the 26, so a gain of only one yard on that play. That'll bring up third down and once again short two. Kashmir needs to get it just across the OMAC 25 for a first down. As the clock continues to move now at 3 47 left to go in the first quarter. 14 to 7. Old Mac ahead. Been an entertaining first quarter to say the least. Hatmaker shotgun. In motion is Zavala. It's Peterson up the middle instead, following his blockers. Cuts it out to the outside. I think he's going to have enough for a first down. I don't know. That's spot. They're going to spot him, it looks like, right at the 25. Looks like they're going to have to measure on this one. But yeah, you're exactly. <laughs> yep, but not even going to measure. They can see it fourth and very short about 
a foot to go for Kashmir. They're going to go for it here. The ball is on the OMAC 25-yard line. Kashmir bringing in a couple uh, different personnel here, some bigger bodies. Would you like to say the jumbo package, Brandon? Maybe. We'll see. They're, uh, let's see what kind of personnel they have here. It's like a couple extra tight ends. Peterson in the backfield. There go. And there's Hatmaker. He's just going to keep it up the middle, and why not? Needed about a foot, got a yard, and that'll be first down for the Bulldogs. <clears throat> so Kashmir keeps this drive alive, down by a score here on homecoming night 2023. Kashmir first down and 10. Hatmaker this time is going to go under center. Once again, it looks like Peterson behind him. And the motion man, Trey Smith, on the end around, I guess a sweep you can call it, uh, tripped in the backfield, and that'll be a loss. Yeah. Back to about the 29-yard line, so a loss of five on that play. Quarterback's leg uh, tripped the fly guy uh, as he kind of bellies around as he rolled behind the quarterback has to hand off and roll out of there they got their legs tangled up second and long now second and 15 for the bulldogs high snap nice job by Hatmaker. it's completed dalen smart and he's all the way down to the seven yard line 22 yards on that pass play from Hatmaker to Smart, and that is another first down for Kashmir now deep, deep into OMAC territory. There's the use of that tight end right there, Brandon. Yeah, when you have a heavier package and you keep your your, uh, your tight ends and receivers bunched, it can create some space coming off the, uh, off the snap there. So nice little post inside the, the, the coverage there and give the sophomore hat maker some credit there that was a high snap he composed himself and then threw a nice ball right down the middle of the field yeah, good looking ball first and goal bulldogs minute and a half now left in the first quarter it's a keeper by hat maker and a nice fake as he gets across the five and inside the five to the four yard line then we gain of three and bring up second down and goal from there a lot of window dressing, as we like to say, a lot of motion and, and uh, misdirection there. For but you got to secure the snap, and again, Casper Center's got a guy right up in his grill too. That's right, and a big boy too. Like I said, we don't know the weights, but brings up as I mentioned, second down and goal. Ball is actually at the four-yard line. Hatmaker shotgun, Zavala handoff, tried the right side, cuts it back upfield, and he is going to be drilled at about the seven. I'll make it the six, so a loss of two on that play. It's like the defenses on both sides are now kind of getting wise to this run game on both sides, and they're not getting quite the yards and the chunks they were getting earlier. Yeah, it's hard. You have to adjust to the speed of the fly sweep, and if you don't, you have to set the edge. The defensive right. left side, and they keep running, casual keeps running to their right, so Omak's left edge has got to set that, and they did there. Did his job, put his land on the brakes and cut back. Third and goal, 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Back other side, just like Omak did on their scoring play. It's Zavala, and he scampers into the end zone. Touchdown. Zavala from Hatmaker, six yards. And Kashmir now one point away from tying this one up. Nice drive for the Bulldogs there. Took a good chunk of that first quarter clock off. And on for the extra point is Baker. Landon Baker to tie this up. Left-footed kicker. Plenty of height, plenty of distance, and it's good. Three and a half seconds left to go here in this first quarter. And it's now OMAC 14 and Cashmere 14. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Abby's Pizza. For more than 50 years, Abby's has proudly served the Northwest with toppings to the edge, 100% real cheese and freshly rolled dough. Make it an Abby's Pizza night. Also by Alpine Air for heat and air. Call Alpine Air. So a nine play drive uh, for Kashmir on that scoring possession, 65 yards, highlighted by a 
six-yard Zavala from Hatmaker touchdown pass, and that's good for Kashmir. Four minutes and 20 seconds off the clock on that possession. We're now at 14-14. Kazeda, I should say Baker, excuse me, on to kick for Kashmir. With this 14-14 ball game, we've got a good Caribou Trail League matchup for you tonight. Here's the kick left-footed by Baker. It's taken and bobbled again at the seven-yard line. And hit hard right at about the 17. Good hit by Gideon Six, 6'2", 190-pounder. And boy, did he stand up the run back by Carrillo there. You're going to get a half the distance penalty here. Omak had a late hit on the kicker. Didn't see that on the kicker. So that'll take Omak back as the referees confer, as you can see on your screen. And we are in the second quarter. Great to have you along. Grant Olson along with Brandon Harley here from Kashmir, Washington tonight. Caribou Trail League football. And it's always a lot of fun, that's for sure. Yeah, it's been an entertaining game. It, it, like We're just now starting the second quarter, and it's 14-14 uh, all with a lot of offense. Has been a lot of offense. Not sure what the referees could be conferring about. I guess where the ball is once again, or where it should be spotted. Well, while we're waiting there, I can tell you that uh, Cashmere's had Ryan Hat, Rylan Hatmaker is three for four for about 31 yards and a touchdown. That last one to Dalen Smart there, or sorry, uh, Isaac Zavala, six yard touchdown pass. And our OMAC Pioneer stats have been all Bo Sackman, right? Boy, he's I had guess. a 32 yard pass, but other than that, he's had 125 yards rushing. So now they're saying it personal foul on both sides so the penalties will offset now Brandon so the ball should be back at what <laughs> hmm are they gonna they're gonna re-kick it is that what we're gonna do maybe Omax team is on the sideline just wondering what the heck's going on here but it looks like they're gonna re-kick this Oh, we're at the quarter change. That's why we're seeing uh, switch ends. That's right. That's so, what it is. So it'll be offsetting penalties. Yeah. <laughs> Ball still should be at what about the 17, I think, or the, yeah, 17 yard line. So Mac will have it there at their own 17. Just to start the second quarter. And great to have you along tonight on the NCW Life Channel. OMAC in the white jerseys, trimmed in red and black, while Cashmere in their home plaques trimmed in orange and white good crowd on hand as you'd expect homecoming night here at cashmere and we will bring you some of those festivities as we get into our halftime tonight's broadcast brought to you by apple valley honda test drive a new honda today at apple valley honda in east wenatchee apple valley honda committed to preserving the environment not only with fuel efficient vehicles but also with other eco-friendly actions and alternatives and by biosports physical therapy aqua therapy sports biomechanics orthopedic physical therapy orthotics all you need to keep moving you can find them online at biosports.net open monday through friday 7 a.m to 7 p.m all right it looks like we are ready finally to play some football here first down and 10 for omac now moving left to right on your screen to begin this second quarter. This will be the fourth drive of the ball game for OMAC. They've scored on two of their first three drives. Still a delay on the field. All right, it looks like everybody's getting in place and we should be ready to go here. Once again, Sackman in shotgun. First down and 10, Pioneers, ball at their own 17. Sackman, pass outside, and it's a little out of the reach of the intended receiver that time. 
as Jesse Garcia, and that goes incomplete. Not one of the better passes we've seen Sackman throw tonight. No, Omak uh, was going 11 personnel there, and they were just trying to five yard out. Corner for uh, Kashmir is a little bit of a cushion there, so the, not the worst call, but not the best throw. Second down and 10, Omak. Sackman, the handoff right side, some room and breaks the tackle and then gets hammered right at the sideline. See who that ball carrier was. Looked like Kaber Pomianak, Pomianak, six foot, 200 pound sophomore. Gain of about two on that play, so third down and eight now for Omak. Sackman, shotgun, running back beside him, back to pass. Lots of time this time, and he's going to wing it right down the center of the field, and it's picked off at the 45-yard line. Trey Smith with the interception, and that's our first turnover of the night. Yeah, tough read there. Both uh, Catherine's high, oh, single high safety playing center field. Man coverage underneath that. So when he threw that up, had two men there ready to pick it off. Boy, just, you know, you're throwing into double coverage. Is it confidence, Brandon, that your receiver could maybe go up and make a play? Or are you just, what's, what are you well, thinking when you throw it into double coverage? Yeah, I, like, think, I know that's the play, but. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, it may be a single man route where you're used to seeing that post work and maybe it has in the past but they again they went from that empty personnel back to a more traditional 11 personnel all right all right hat maker now it's zavala he's going to try the left side there's that speed down the sideline that might be a horse collar right there on the yep. sideline and it is clear as a bell at about the 36 yard line That's a gain of about 20, 19 yards on that play, plus the horse collar tackle along that cashmere sideline. That's a third, what, no, I guess it would, we had offsetting penalties to end the first quarter, so it's about the sixth penalty on both sides, and they've all been pretty clear, easy calls. You know, they really, we haven't guys. seen a holding or anything like that. No. They've all been personal foul yeah. variety. Yeah. Ones you got to call that are pretty obvious and unsafe. Well, that'll take the ball all the way down to the OMAC 22-yard line. Kashmir in excellent field position here with 11.01 left in the second. The Bulldogs may have started off a little slow, down 14 to nothing, but they have come roaring back late in the first, and now a nice drive here to begin the second quarter. It's funny how momentum works, isn't it? It's not just high school sports. It's all sports, all sports isn't it's it? It's definitely high school sports. You feel it a lot, but, yeah, definitely all sports. You kind of... Omak got off the bus and kind of punched him in the face a little bit. He took him off their heels and had to react, and now we're right back in the mix. Ball spotted now right at the 20-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Kashmir Bulldogs. Trying to take the lead with the score here early in this second quarter. Hatmaker and shotgun. Back to pass, middle of the field, nice pass. It's the tight end, once again, smart, and he wrestles his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Kashmir. 20 yards, smart from Hatmaker. Great play action off the, the fly sweep. Again, Omak has to honor that. So many times, Isaac Zavala has run that for a huge gain. Sucks him in. Omax DBs are left one on one in the back there, and big tight end. Baker now on for the point after. Try to make this a 21 14 ball game. Cashmere, as I mentioned, down 14 to nothing in the first. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 10 49 left to go, second quarter. It's now Kashmir 21 and OMAC 14. Back with more Caribou Trail football action in 60 seconds. Hey, hon, would you run this around to the wash rack? Oh, okay. Hey, hon, what happened? They shrunk the truck. The 
all new mid-sized Canyon is now available at Sangster Motors. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. The kickoff, quick drive for Cashmere. Two plays, 56 yards, took 20 seconds off the clock. Cashmere now leads it 21-14 on the run back for Omak, and he ran into a brick wall as Jesse Garcia. Do have a score as well. Uh, six minutes roughly left in the first half. It's Eastmont 7 and Skyline 3. And what a matchup that is tonight, Brandon. Yeah, top 10 4A schools going at it. It's a good test for your Eastmont Wildcats. Sure is on the road. Oh, yeah, and a great place to play, too. You were talking about their nice facilities there. Yeah, we were fortunate for when actually we did a walk through there a couple years ago. We had our uh, state playoff game against Kennedy Catholic, and uh, they were kind enough to let us stretch our legs there well that's nice they have some nice facilities over there in general they have that's a lot sure. of nice facilities they on that do. campus it looks like a college campus first and 10 now pioneers finding themselves down for the first time in this game 21 14 five receivers again in this offensive set handoff right side and a nice play joshua busco was the ball carry and a nice play by trey smith from his defensive back position and that's a loss of about two on first down for OMAC. That's the example we were talking about there with uh, uh, OMAC having to set the edge. There's Kashmir setting the edge. They got a nice downhill safety who actually made that uh, ball carrier put his uh, brakes on a little bit. Senior Trey Smith has had himself a first half. He's, He's played really well. downhill, yeah. Second and 12 now, Pioneers. Three receivers split right, a receiver in motion. From left to right, pass over the middle, and it's jumped and almost picked off. The route was totally jumped. Their intended receiver was Tegan Mullen. That was Trey Smith, I believe, again in there on coverage. Yeah. Fly, fly motion to the right side and uh, throw that uh, that slant behind. But uh, when you telegraph that throw, you're staring at one receiver, man covered. That's man. a good point too. That brings up third and long now for OMAC. Third and 12, ball at their own 18. Trips right side, two receivers to the left. Again, a motion man. Sackman tries to find some room to pass. Now wings it down left side. Some contact over there. Don't see a flag. OMAC bench wanted interference over there. They're not going to get it, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Looked like it was kind of mutual, the uh, contact going down that sideline. Yeah, ball was a little underthrown, kind of some hand fighting there, and uh, obviously uh, a little short there. Probably the right call. You know, no call is no, the right call in that situation. I think so, too. Punny Newton on for OMAC, I believe, their first punt of the night. They did go yeah. for it on fourth and, I think, 12 or yeah, something it like cost that. Them that uh, it cost them seven. Yeah. It really did. So we'll see what kind of uh, punting game they have, and that might be part of the decision they made earlier. Bo Sackman, the quarterback, is the punter, so that's always worth keeping your eye on. Sackman, good snap, good punt, too. Sends Zavala back on his bike, back across the 35-yard line, stumbles a bit, makes a nice move. Now he's got some room left side, heads back up the center of the field. Turn nothing into a pretty darn nice run up to the uh, Kashmir 45-yard line. The uh, punter, Bo Sackman, the quarterback, uh, took a little bit of a hit there. He's still uh, putting a bug in the White Hat's ear about uh, getting hit after the play. <laughs> there is a flag on the field. I'm not sure exactly where that came it's from. It's on the far side of the field, so let's see what this call is now. So it comes uh, with holding on uh, Kashmir there. 9.35 left to go in the second quarter. Pretty nice run by Zavala. It looked like he had nothing. A lot of times if you stumble or bobble the ball, the coverage yeah. overruns you, and then you have some open field, right? It's definitely one of those weird things, regardless of the level, that from the pros down to the high school, if, if you see a muffed kick and a little bit of a stumble, the defense has to break down a little bit, and you're just not ready. It's just it's one of those things that you see at all levels. 
Okay. The call was a hold against Omac. So that gives Cashmere just a fantastic field position at the OMAC 45 yard line. Cashmere leading it 21 14, 9 35 left to go before halftime. Hatmaker, shotgun, Zavala, the quick handoff, right side squirts through the uh, block on that right side and gets across the 35, and I think he'll be down to the 34 yard line. Nice gain of 11 yards on first down. For the Bulldogs there on the stop was uh, Damian Bertram, only a freshman for OMAC. That looked like it was a little more designed to run inside. You notice that he didn't belly out, and he actually slammed on the brakes, cut inside. Sometimes they're designed to do that, but it might have been just a read. Boy, Zavala at 5'6", 125 pounds. He's so quick out there. He's only a sophomore, too. Here's Hatmaker now on first down. Pass over the middle. It's caught. Logan Spees, and he's still going downfield across the 20, and he'll be wrestled down at the 16-yard line. Gain of 19 on that play. Boy, the momentum, Brandon, has yeah. definitely changed here in this game. Well, they've been so consistent with running that fly sweep on first down so many times, and then watching Omak's defense flow with that when you pull that fake. That, that's their version of play action, right? right. It's, it's, it's a good-looking play. Omax playing uh, man defense on top of that, so you're you're left out to dry one on one. Hatmaker shotgun Zavala in motion. There's Lots again. of time for Hatmaker over the middle of the field and right into the hands of an Omax pioneer defender. Intercepted at about the five yard line, out to the 15, and that's picked off by number 33. Elijah Allen, I should say, with that interception, and that's the first turnover for Kashmir in this one. And your uh, OMAC uh, sophomore safety there just sitting in center field. It was man underneath with a single high safety. And he did what he was supposed to do. He was reading the quarterback's eyes and he threw it right to him. It looked he, like Hatmaker just didn't see him, Brandon. No, he was, he was focusing in on that tight end again that had been open a couple times. All right, first down and 10 now for the Pioneers. Sackman, shotgun. Empty backfield again, plenty of time. Gets hit as he throws it down the left side. Some contact, and that's going to be called at about the 45-yard line. The ball was in the air, and that will be called on Logan Spees, it looks like. Yeah, that's a tough call. That uh, ball was under the thrown again, so the receiver who's going full speed has to slow down, and the DB who's behind him ends up running into him. It's, it's, but you do have a flag out in the backfield, too. This could be offsetting penalties here. Maybe a hold on OMAC. Let's see. Got to say, it's never a quick call. It's always a conference and then the call. So we'll see what it is here. We've got 821 left to go in this second quarter. Remember, coming up at halftime, it's homecoming here at Cashmere. We'll bring you all of those festivities. Have an update from Zeppel Stadium in Yakima if you want it. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's about four minutes left in the first half. Wenatchee High School is up 14-7 over the Davis Pirates. Big nine action. Also, we mentioned East Mott in that tough game at Skyline tonight. So I think it's offsetting penalties. I'm still not really sure. I am sure Kashmir leads this one 21 to 14. As the referees still try and figure out where the heck to spot the ball. Now they're going to move it in Omax favor up the field to about the 30 yard line. Okay. So it looks like that's where Omax will have it now at the 30 yard line. First down and 10. Sackman and shotgun as he has been pretty much this whole game. Busco also in the backfield. Omak changed their personnel after their third and fourth drives. They were going a little bit heavier sets and they were having that success early in the game with that big empty formation. And uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised that they haven't let their quarterback try to run a little bit more, but sometimes the defense adjusts too. 
So we're still waiting to get underway here. Not sure what the holdup could possibly be now, but. It's like we're getting closer to go here, Brandon. <laughs> Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Clean Air Connection. Keep your carpet, area rugs, upholstery, and air ducts clean for a healthier environment inside your home. Call Clean Air Connection today or at yourcleanconnection.com. Okay, here we go. Players are finally lined up as we are <laughs> set to go. That took about 10 minutes. Well, not quite yet. Just not gonna, quite yet. Okay. okay. Sack and shotgun. Empty backfield again. This time trips left. Two receivers right side. Nobody in motion. Sackman under pressure. Gets out of the first wave of pressure. Throws a duck downfield. And it's blocked right at the last minute. Once again, Logan Spees, the sophomore. A fantastic job. And that goes incomplete. Brings up second down and 10. Good Casimir front push back in there, uh, right in the offensive lineman's face. He had to scramble outside there, and uh, he took a hit as he let go of that ball, and uh, her white hat let it go. Speed's pretty good looking sophomore player out yeah. there, really. He doesn't play like a sophomore. No. Second down and 10. He has been all over the field. Looks like Omac will come back out with an empty backfield. They're going to tighten everything up here i haven't seen this yet still trips i guess left side two receivers right and it's a handoff a left side and not much doing good gang tackle it's allen on the carry elijah allen he's only a sophomore as well Catherine did a great job of stretching the field when you're playing that uh that uh, an offense who runs that fly like that and which they see obviously a lot of in practice, I'm sure, right. playing against themselves. They, if you stretch that to the sideline, that's the best defense. Use your sideline as another defender. Once again, this familiar setup. Trips right side. Just one receiver to the left this time as Sackman rolls right. Still looking, looks downfield. It's high. I think the intended receiver was Jesse Garcia inside Cashmere territory. It goes high and incomplete, and that brings up fourth down. Had two receivers kind of in the same area. Yeah, they did. It's Devereaux some, and Garcia yeah. there. Somebody didn't run the right route or floated on it a little bit and uh, missed an opportunity there for a uh, first down, I think. Yeah, a little, a little yep. bit of first down. Fourth down and 11. They would have had enough for a first down. It would have been more than enough. But instead, will Sackman punt it or what's going to happen here? Remember. Omak went for it on a fourth down and 12 at about this same yeah. spot of the field in the first quarter. What are they going to do here? Fourth and 11 to 12 yards to go. Sackman, time, looking right, now looking over the middle of the field, has a receiver, and it's caught at the 39-yard line, still on his feet, the 20, 10, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Tegan Mullen. Wow. 68 yards on that play. Mullen from Sackman. What a pass over the middle of the field. Well, uh, Coach Sackman over there is uh, quite the gambler, man, with uh, fourth and 12 from your own territory. Amazing. And that post pattern crossing the field. Wow. Right there. Put it right where he could catch it. And had a good block by the receiver on the sideline closest to us here to break him free for that. That touchdown. coverage wasn't that bad, no, really. That pass was just money. Here's the kick now. Kuzeta. It's up and it's good. 7.09 left to go. Second quarter. We're all tied up. OMAC 21, Cashmere 21, back in 60. Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning has been proudly serving the Wenatchee Valley for over 35 years. And just as Dick's has been there for you, they have also been an essential part of our community, supporting local youth sports all year long. And your Wenatchee Wild. Thanks for your support. Thanks. Heating and Air Conditioning, your local independent train comfort specialist. Call 884-6444 today. The Wenatchee Valley. 
Here, most of us really enjoy the great outdoors, and most of us try to make the most of our natural resources. Here at Apple Valley Honda, we know that for generations, we have harnessed nature to sustainably power the West, and we are proud to be part of that tradition as an environmentally green dealership award winner. Being a green dealership means Apple Valley Honda has reduced our overall environmental impact. We are so proud to live in this wonderful community. Well, another quick drive for OMAC that time. Three plays, 85 yards. Took a minute 18 off the clock. Uh, Kazeda's point after try, good. And we are all tied up for Hendon here with 7.09 left to go. Quick drives and quick scores have been the, uh, the name of the game here in this first half. Squib kick. Cashmere does recover it and takes a knee. It's uh, Brecken Stone, the senior, and Cashmere will have it at their own 35-yard line. A little surprised to see uh, OMAC uh, do that again. They must uh, have a little bit of a game plan uh, to keep it away from Cashmere's return, guys. Yeah, because we haven't seen a full kickoff yet, have we, from OMAC? Oh, yeah, it might be that their coverage guys might have a, a little bit of a lapse there. So they want to – I know that we always look for a way to try to limit returns when right. we played uh, uh, opponents that had some athletic returns. Because it's such a play that can change a game, yeah. can, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And, and it just takes one really good athlete who ends up with the ball to make something happen there. Hatmaker, quick pitch left side. Looks like Peterson it is, trying to find room, and he can't get away. And a nice defensive stop by Jesse Garcia of the Pioneers. And that'll be a loss of about five on first down for Cashmere. Peterson really hasn't been able to get on track, has he, tonight? No, he's had one that a counter for a touchdown for 33 yards. But other than that, it's uh, more of his inside runs have been stuffed just like that. That's right, the 33-yard run first touchdown for Cashmere in the first quarter. Second down and 15, excuse me, Brandon. Sorry, I didn't catch you. That was the first time we didn't see Zavala on the fly sweep to start. Right. Playing. That's a movement there, and that'll be a false start, I believe, on Kashmir. That'll take him back another five yards and bring up second down and 20. Just when we thought Kashmir had all the momentum, Omak comes back and quick score, and just like that, we are tied up. 21-21 in a game, i got to say, at least so far, looks like a game of very evenly matched teams, Brandon. So far, yeah. Boy. It's, uh, it, I, it's been so long since I've seen a tight uh, Caribou Trail matchup. I thought it would be a lot more ground and pound. but You know, I kind of did too, <laughs> to be honest with you. Did you take the over and under on this one here? Jim? Yeah, right. <laughs> it would have been the under if yeah. I'd have done it, yeah. Here we go, second and 20, swing pass to Peterson on the right side. Shakes that first tackle, has room on the far side, and a nice pass and catch all the way out to the 40-yard line. Gain of 14 on that play, and that'll bring up a much more manageable third down for the Bulldogs, third and five. They need to get to their own 45-yard line. Nice play by Peterson, a nice run right side. That was an actual RPO as well. He had a counter no offensive line going left the quarterback read it and that's the right read so a second 20 turns into a third down and five zavala motion left to right and we've got somebody jumped i believe on the omac side of things and will that be enough for a first down it's going to be awfully close I think he's going to be what, Brandon, just inches maybe short going by that first down marker on the far side of the field. Yeah, you can see the side judge on the Boy, OMAC that. side. So it close. About six inches, I think. So third and short for the Bulldogs. Big play in this stage of the game, really, as the clock's moving now. 6-10 left at halftime. Both teams, you, you know, you would love to have a score before you go into the halftime locker room. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit longer because of homecoming. You want that momentum, don't you, going into the definitely, locker room? Definitely do. Handoff. It's Peterson left side. Nice move at the line. Allows him to get to midfield to the 50, and that's a nice five-yard scamper for Peterson. Tyler Peterson, 5'8", 160-pound senior for the Bulldogs. A little surprised they didn't go under center for the sneak again. First and 10, Cashmere trying to put together a drive here before halftime. They've had it for about a minute and a half. Would love to use the rest of this second quarter clock and then get a touchdown. 
Peterson in the backfield, handoff goes to him, right side. I think he dropped the ball for a second. I think it bounced right back to him, though. Very friendly bounce. You could see it. Yeah, it looked like a shadow bounced right back up into his uh, hands Oh, there. boy. It turns out to be a one-yard gain on the play. A little gimpy is Prin Fox, the big offensive lineman, 6'3", 255-pounder. Still limping on that right ankle a little bit. As Rylan Hatmaker comes now in from the sideline with the play on this second down and nine. Ball just inside the 50 at the OMAC 49-yard line. Two receivers left side, one to the right. Now Zavala in motion. Play action, quick pass, left side. It speeds, breaks that first tackle. Left side, it's still inside the 40 and almost down to the 35 to about the 36. Gain of 13 on that play. And Logan Spees, what a great looking sophomore. Got good size too, 6'1", 175. He's going to be a player here, it looks like, Brandon. Really good looking play there. Play action, screen, flowing to the right. And you throw back to the left and it gives a chance for the left tackle left guard to get downfield all thrown behind the line of scrimmage so you can do that Cash really good looking play putting together a nice drive here late in this second quarter with zavala in motion hat maker the handoff peterson now this is cashmere football right here right up the middle inside the 30 down to about the 27 yard line and that'll be another nice gain of about seven for peterson starting to see that Offensive line take bigger strides here right as this as the quarter moves on They're keeping it between the tackles as opposed to running the sweep outside and notice the OMAC defense a lot of hands-on Hips out there right now might be getting a little winded here late in this first half All right second down and about three yards to go left side Zavala breaks some tackles don't know if he's quite going to be at first down territory. I think he got it. Yeah, he did. And that's a <clears throat> nice run. Zavala has had himself a first half. Yeah, he's got low leverage there being a little bit uh, shorter than uh, some of the other backs. So he was able to get uh, lower than the defender and then put him on his uh, backside there. Kashmir keeps this drive alive. Three minutes, 37 seconds left to go before halftime. One of the things with the smaller schools you were saying there, I mean, they, these guys have been playing really well on both sides of the ball, but you don't have a lot of depth sometimes. And no, that's play both ways. So it's a great play. Well, you get winded that yeah, way. It's a for track sure. meet, Whether for you're sure. 17 yeah. years old or not, uh, right? Yeah. All right. First down at 10, Bulldogs. The ball is at the OMAC 25 yard line. Handoff up the middle, Zavala, and he got crunched after about a two yard gain, and that crunch. Thanks to Owen Adamek, the 190-pound linebacker. Gain of one on the play. Second down and nine now for the Bulldogs. Clock continuing to move as we are set to dip under three minutes left before halftime. Split out left side. Keep your eye on him. Logan Spees on this second down and nine. Hatmaker, shotgun, Zavala, motion, handoff. Why not? Peterson again. It looked like he was going to fall down. Lowers his shoulder and gets a really nice gain for the Bulldogs on second down. Be a third down and about three yards to go. You have to be so disciplined on defense when you have so much fly motion back and forth that if you don't honor that and then you get that guy running up underneath you there like that you're getting chipping away five more yards five more yards reminds you of eastmont a little bit with very, all the motion similar, doesn't it yeah, yeah very similar all right third down and short third and three for the bulldogs deep into omac territory at the 18 yard line high snap haymaker gets it and then shovels it out to zavala i think just trying to do avoid a loss but zavala going to get hammered down after about a three yard loss and that'll take the ball back to about the 25 yard line well make it the 23rd 23 again yeah awesome. snap there yeah that was a tough one to handle for a hat maker and this makes it difficult now fourth down and about seven to go definitely outside of field goal range here and uh, they've shown that they'll go I, I would imagine at this spot right here they do their quick kick, but uh, 
with the momentum that they've had and the time the running order. down to Brandon minute 20 now left second quarters of all emotion <clears throat> and we've got a whistle timeout here for and a timeout called timeout. by coach Bremer Tonight's broadcast here on the NCW Life Channel. Caribou Trail League football is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Cascade, encouraging you to leave your mark. Coldwell Banker Cascade is guiding you home in north central Washington. Also brought to you by tonight, Confluence Health, high quality care close to home. Confluence Health is dedicated to improving their patients' health with safe, high quality care in 12 communities and also by dix heating and air conditioning providing heating and air conditioning service and installation since 1982 serving residential and commercial they specialize in indoor air quality also installation service and repair it's dix heating and air conditioning all right we're at the half in skyline it's east mod 14 and skyline three good game boy Big test for Eastmont. Well, that's a statement game kind of for Eastmont. They didn't go on the road and pull that one off. We it saw is. Skyline, Brandon, yeah. you and I earlier yeah. this year, and a big win over Wenatchee. It was, what, the first game of it the was, season. Yeah, and they were. They, they looked were, awful solid in that first game. Very complete-looking football team with a lot of athleticism. So that's a good test for Eastmont, especially on the road, like you said. All right, here we go. A minute 17 left. Eastmont going for it here. Fourth down and seven. At the OMAC 22-yard line, Hatmaker back to pass and almost picked off the receiver. Spees fell down or was knocked down at about the 10-yard line. Boy, Cashmere wants a call there, not going to get it. And the Bulldogs will turn it over on downs back to OMAC. 10-play drive, and you end up turning it over on downs for Cashmere. So OMAC now with a chance here late in this first half. The ball is at their own 22-yard line with a minute 12 left to go. And we are all tied up 21-21 here at homecoming night at Kashmir. Back to their five uh, receiver set. Are they going to chuck it here on first down again, go for that big home run? Boy, they might. We've seen this set up a lot here tonight. Yep, Sackman rolling to the right. He likes doing that. Has a receiver wide open out in the flat. And it's Devereaux. He gets across the 30 to about the 34-yard line, and that will be enough for an OMAC first down. 12 yards on that pass and catch. That's that half roll they tried in the last drive where two receivers were in the same spot. That one's a little more spaced out, sat in the hole in the zone. Easy pitch and catch. This time trips left side. That's the wide side of the field. Bushko in motion. Now he sits in the slot left side of the line. Sackman rolls this time to his left, looking for some help. The receiver wasn't even looking at the football, and that was uh, Mason Fletcher. The ball goes incomplete and stops the clock with 37 seconds left to go in the half. I'm not sure what the receiver was looking at there, and uh, it's unfortunate uh, for the quarterback. As soon as you let go of the ball and your receiver's not looking for it, uh, bad things happen fast. You know what? Trey Smith did see it. He was almost yeah. there for that pick. As I mentioned, clock is stopped on the incompletion. 37.9 seconds left in the first half. Same formation, three receivers left side, two to the right on this second down and 10 for the Pioneers. Bo Sackman, the senior quarterback in shotgun. There's a flag once again before the snap. Delay a game here. Yeah, I didn't look at that till the last second, and that'll take OMAC back five yards and bring up a second down and 15. Now, does that change your thinking now with 37 seconds left, Brandon? You, I think they were trying to go downfield earlier. Now do you just yeah. kind of sit on it? And I, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> they've been, Not as explosive as this game has been, right, too. They've been rolling the dice since the, the kickoff, so I don't think it changes anything for OMAC at this point. Second and 15, still at 37 seconds left. Sackman, low snap, wings it out left flat. Cuts it back up field, gets back maybe to the original line of scrimmage. And that's a five yard gain. Taking Mullen, the receiver, with the catch there. So we're back to the original line of scrimmage. Clock stopped again, 26 seconds left. Oh, man, I got a timeout here for you. 
We'll take one, too. 26 seconds left to go second quarter. It's all tied up. Kashmir 21 and OMAC 21. We're back in 30 seconds. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here, we live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. Twenty-six seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Been a very entertaining first half here from Cashmere High School tonight. Caribou Trail League football on the NCW Life Channel. It's OMAC and Cashmere, and we are all tied up 21-21 as we get close to the halftime break and the homecoming festivities on the way here at Cashmere High School. But first, OMAC facing a third down and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Sackman shotgun. Familiar formation. Sackman tries the planned quarterback draw, and he is going nowhere. A nice play. Number 73, Jacob Savage, the sophomore on that stop. And that'll be actually a loss of about two yards on that play, bringing up fourth down and 12. This time, Cashmere calls a timeout. Now they're thinking that they <laughs> might try something here with 17 seconds left. Gives me time to tell you that tonight's broadcast here on the NCW Life Channel brought to you by Global Car Care. Your vehicle is their number one priority. Diesels and European cars are their specialty. You can pick up and drop off. That's also available. Stop by their website at globalcarcare.net. And by Harvest Valley Pest Control, living healthy, local, and pest-free. You can rest assured Harvest Valley Pest Control uses kid and pet safe material around your home or office. Call Harvest Valley Pest Control today for your free estimate. That phone number, 509-423-2207. So here we go, fourth down and 12 for the Pioneers. 17.3 seconds left to go. Pioneers in punt formation. Remember, Bo Sackman, the quarterback, is the punter. It looks like Logan Spees back deep to return it for the Bulldogs. Here's Sackman's kick high and short this time, and it takes uh, Omak bounce and goes out of bounds. It looks like it around the 40-yard line. Casher's not going to have much time to work with here. 11 seconds left. This Kashmir will have it actually at their own 44-yard line. So time maybe for a couple of plays, right, Brandon? Yeah, I was trying to remember. I think Kashmir still has a timeout. And, uh, you know, if, you, if you're playing the game where you get a couple passes to the outside, get out of bounds, or break one deep, right. that's what you're looking for. They With did the have timeout, they can play, go over yeah. the middle once, yeah. and that's it. But yeah. uh, Got a timeout by the... And Omak now a timeout time. is called by Omac. We're going to take one, too. 11 seconds left to go in the second quarter. It's Kashmir 21 and Omac 21. Back with more football on the NCW Life Channel in 30 seconds. Like most backseat drivers, I'm all about safety. Uh-oh. Les Schwab Tires is, too. Because Les Schwab fixes brakes, steering, and more. See those guys? They just do tires. Eyes ahead, Dad! Look, I'm not telling people how to do their job. Blinker! I'm just glad Les Schwab puts my safety first. Watch, they're gonna come greet me. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. So Kashmir has 56 yards to go for a score here and only 11 seconds to do it before halftime. As the Bulldogs break huddle, Hatmaker and Shotgun need a couple of big plays here to get a maybe a late score in this first half. Zavala left side looking for a block, gets one, and then is hammered out of bounds at about the 42 of Omak. Yeah, 13 yard gain or so for Kashmir over that left side, and now 4.9 seconds left. We'll see what Kashmir could pull out here. 
late in this first half. Peterson in the backfield behind Hatmaker. Two receivers short side of the field to the left. Now Zavala comes in motion. It's a handoff to Zavala. Tries that right side. Hoping for a big hitter over there. Time has expired as Zavala gets down to about the 35-yard line and a gain of nine. There's the cannon, and that ends our first half of play. So at the break here from Kashmir High School, great to have you with us tonight for Caribou Trail League football. Our score is Kashmir 21 and OMAC 21. We're back to Kashmir High School in two minutes. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At ColdwellBanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At ColdwellBanker.com. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Eight different political campaigns, 16 candidates, three cities deciding their future. NCW Life wants you to be informed when you cast your ballot in this November's election. That's why we're sitting down with candidates across the ballot for mayor, city council, and school board to talk through the issues and help you make the best choice. Look for those interviews right here on this channel starting October 22nd and on our website, ncwlife.com. We are at halftime here at Kashmir High School, Caribou Trail League matchup. It's OMAC and Kashmir, and we are all tied up at 21. Now enjoy the 52-member Kashmir Bulldog Marching Band. Right, there you have it the cashmere bulldog marching band here at homecoming and once again our score at the break is omac 21 and cashmere 21. gonna get another song out of the band here brandon or let's hear it for the cashmere high school bulldog marching band 
All right, that's it for the band. We will take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back and look at stats, and we'll have more homecoming activities from Kashmir when we come back. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dick's, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing, and they service all major brands of HVAC units. Brent Olson along with Brandon Harley back at Kashmir High School at Bulldog Field. A big Caribou Trail matchup for you tonight on the NCW Life Channel. It's Kashmir 21 and OMAC 21. We will bring you part of this homecoming festivities. We can't see the candidates yet, but boy, these cars, Brandon, I'll tell you what. What did the announcer say, the Wenatchee Corvette Club? I it's believe it is, Corvette yeah, Club. the Valley Corvette Club. There you go with one of them. So when we get the candidates within sight here, we will bring you that here on the NCW Live channel. Both teams got off to a quick start. OMAC scored on their first possession. Nine plays, 93 yards, took two minutes, 54 seconds off the clock. And the kick was good. OMAC led it 7 to nothing, And then on their very next drive, two plays, an 80-yard run by Bo Sackman, the quarterback. Point after try, good. And that made the score quickly here in Kashmir, 14 to nothing. And then Kashmir answered back with three scores of their own. Quick ones at that. Three plays, 54 yards. That was a 33-yard run by Peterson. The point after good made it 14-7. And then Kashmir, nine plays, 65 yards. That was the best drive of the night, 420 off the clock. A six-yard pass, Zavala from Hatmaker, point after good. And that tied us up at 14 apiece. And then I uh, should say he's my Kashmir scored on their third consecutive drive. This time, a 20-yard pass from Smart, uh, from Hatmaker to Smart. Two plays, 56 yards, a point after good, 21-14. And then Omak uh, answered about midway through that second quarter. A 68-yard Sackman to Mullen touchdown pass, the point after good. And that's where we stand right now at 21-21. to Let's listen in for halftime festivities here at Kashmir. Her parents are Trevor and Holly Kurt. Her favorite high school memory is volleyball games and school dances. Faith is involved in volleyball, tennis, honor society, and FBLA. Her dream vacation spot is Bora Bora. And the best advice she ever received is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me.
Halftime festivities continue here at Kashmir High School as you are seeing the uh, homecoming royalty. Kind of a slow roll here at halftime, but they're getting there. Beautiful Corvettes here at Lightning Kashmir Steve High School. Conference Red 2019 Corvette Grand Sport Coupe is Esther Irene Walkley. Her parents are Bernice and Rick Walkley. Her favorite high school memory is school dances. Esther is involved in soccer and club soccer. Her dream vacation spot is the Bahamas. And the best advice she ever received is, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Riding in Dick of Menace's red 2023 Corvette Z51 CA convertible is Molly Ann Smith. Her parents are Greg and Jenny Smith. The favorite high school memory is being a part of the student section at home football games. Molly is involved in volleyball, track, and honor society. Her dream vacation spot is Greece. And the best advice she ever received is anything her mom ever said. <laughs> trip to Camas. Kate is involved in football, basketball, and baseball. His dream vacation spot is Bora Bora. And the best advice he ever received is, be careful as you stride. It's not the peak, it's the guide. So learn to love the trail. Number 16, Dallin Cole Smart. <laughs> Parents are Dustin and Laura Smart. His favorite high school memory is beating Cascade on the homecoming football parable game and school bus karaoke after football games. Dallin is involved in football, basketball, weightlifting, and honor society. His dream vacation spot is surfing on the beach in Fiji. And the best advice he ever received is the Bible verse John 13, 7. You may not know now, but you later will understand. And number 45, Michael Aaron Acton. His parents are Craig and Natalie Acton. His favorite high school memory is pole vaulting at Track and Field State in 2023. Michael is involved in football, swimming, pole vaulting, snowboarding, snowmobiling, hiking, and fishing. His dream vacation spot is the Florida Keys for fishing and surfing. And the best advice he ever received is, it is not possible for you to sing lower than the infinite light of Christ's atonement shines. Elder Jeff Holland. Please welcome the 2023 Homecoming Royalty. Kashmir <laughs> High School is very proud to have you have reign over the homecoming festivities. What a beautiful and talented group of young ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for representing Kashmir so well. Also, a special thanks to Kashmir's Love Me Flowers for providing the beautiful flower bouquet for the queen tonight. Make sure to support Loves Me Flowers. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. Band, drum roll, please. Your homecoming king is? Aw, oh, you're gonna have to wait until after the game. <laughs> Drum roll band. Your homecoming queen for 2023 is Faith Kurt.
there you have it. The homecoming queen for Kashmir in the 2023 school year. And then they didn't say who the king was because he's a football player, Brandon. So I guess we have to find that out later. That's not fair. They still should ne name him, right? Everybody's here waiting to hear it. And in other schools, I've seen the football players stay out here for this, haven't you? Yeah, I guess it really depends on where your locker room is, too. I yeah, I guess it does. It, yeah, we've had that at Wenatchee. Ours is right underneath the stand, so it's a little easier for our kids to get them out. All right, well, we'll take another two-minute timeout, and we'll come back and look at halftime stats and more as our coverage of Caribou Trail football continues here on the NCW Life Channel. At Kennedy Group, we understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today and let's find your happy place. Hey man, how's your arm? Uh, getting better, actually, thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions, and that ibuprofen's a good option for me. The risk of addiction is not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions, and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. Meet the Move Meter from Coldwell Banker. Just enter any two cities and see how a potential move scores based on cost of living and more. Let's make your dream place a reality. Get your body moving. Tune in for Vibrant Motion featuring low impact aerobics hosted by Connie Townsend. These workouts are great for all ages. Vibrant Motion brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. Weekdays on the NCW Life Channel. Abby's has been around the Pacific Northwest for generations. Yep, our parking lot used to have phone booths, and this amazing hair was considered to be in style. You know what hasn't changed in the past 59 years? Our recipes, hand-rolled dough, and toppings to the edge. That's what makes us legendary. It's back, baby. You asked for it, and Abby's listened. Bacon. Bacon. Cheddar. Yep. This amazing pizza is on sale for a very limited time. Hurry in or order at abbeys.com. Your taste buds and family will thank you. Kun Samir das Problem Saga. Meinen Zylinder überschwingen. Flute. Ich habe mein Fucken below. Keine Sorge. Global Car Care. We speak your car's language. Franz Schlussen. Hey, you. Well, I got a leaky transmission. My head gasket's shot. And I could use some new brake pads. That dog don't hunt. Global Car Care. We speak your car or truck's language. You don't have to be a member to enjoy the view and dine in style at Highlander Bar and Grill, located in East Wenatchee. Highlander Golf Course has added two state-of-the-art full swing simulators. Food and drink service is available from our full service bar and grill, offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Indoor and outdoor seating available. Call Shalane, our on-site coordinator, to schedule your special event allergens. You can't see them, but they live in your carpet and your air ducts. Call the experts at Clean Air Connection for a clean, healthy living environment. Experience, education, and the right equipment equals the best cleaning job possible. Call Clean Air Connection today. Pet dander, allergens, dust, and pollen? Trust your home's carpet and duct cleaning to the experienced experts at Clean Connection. This locally owned family business educates their staff and uses only the best equipment. Call Clean Air Connection today. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. 
Dix Heating and Air Conditioning has been proudly serving the Wenatchee Valley for over 35 years. And just as Dix has been there for you, they have also been an essential part of our community, supporting local youth sports all year long. And your Wenatchee Wild. Thanks for your support. Heating and Air Conditioning, your local independent train comfort specialist. Call 884-6444 today. Hey, hon, would you run us around to the wash rack? Oh, okay. Hey, hon, what happened? They shrunk the truck. The all-new Midsize Canyon is now available at Sangster Motors. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. you find it at Save Full service at a low, low price. The Wenatchee Valley. Here, most of us really enjoy the great outdoors, and most of us try to make the most of our natural resources. Here at Apple Valley Honda, we know that for generations, we have harnessed nature to sustainably power the West, and we are proud to be part of that tradition as an environmentally green dealership award winner. Being a green dealership means Apple Valley Honda has reduced our overall environmental impact. We are so proud to live in this wonderful community. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At ColdwellBanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home, compare cost of living city by city, and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At ColdwellBanker.com. When you call Dix Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dix today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. We are back at Kashmir High School, and halftime is just about over with. Homecoming, so a little bit longer halftime, but still not long enough for me to go down to the bathroom and back, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry about the death. You know, I used to be able to make it through an entire game, but things have changed a little bit over the years, I guess. But Quite a crowd to fight to get down there, too. Oh, man, it's it's something to get down there from here. And it's homecoming, here, yeah. so everybody's kind of huddled around the fence and want a picture, and I made it. Yeah. Got a good one here, Brandon. 21 21. The stats I never caught because I was running down there, but I'm sure it's pretty even, right? Well, I didn't get a chance to actually share them. If you want to hear them now, yeah, let's we hear can it. Go for it. So, with uh, the OMAC Pioneers, their quarterback, Bo Sackman, hasn't had a lot of completions. He's 4 of 16, but he is. Uh, he does have one touchdown and 127 yards. He did have a interception. Running back, Jock, Joshua Bucks. Sorry. Busco was three carries for three yards while Bo himself, he had seven carries for 115 and two touchdowns. One, and one of those was that 80 yard run. Uh, Kashmir, led by Ryland Hatmaker, he was eight of 11 for 92 yards and two touchdowns. He did also have an interception. He's also rushed for about eight yards. Uh, on the uh, rushing in for Kashmir, the Bulldogs have Isaac Zavala for uh, 92 yards on 10 carries and a touchdown. And uh, Receiving, we have Dalen Smart, two catches for 42 yards and a touchdown. Isaac Zavala did have two catches for four yards and a touchdown. And Logan Spees had two catches for 32 yards as well. So, yeah, pretty even as we kind of would expect, right, in a 21-21 right, yeah. game. Each team's got some yards in different ways. But, uh, right. 
uh, OMAX have come in big chunks, big plays, a 80-yard run, a 40-yard run, and a 60-something yard touchdown. Boy, and it was quick hitting first yeah. quarter. Then in the early in the second, I believe, but or late in this, about eight minutes left in the second is when OMAX scored their third. But we're ready to go. Cashmere did win the toss and will receive this second half kickoff. Kazeda on to kick off for OMAC. He's been either pooch kicking it or kind of squib kicking it so far in this game. We'll see what he comes out with here. And it looks like it's going to be another squibber. And you catch it on your knee, you're down right there where you catch it. And that's about the 42 yard line. So good field position once again for Kashmir to start this first drive here of this second half. Thanks for being here tonight, Grant Olson, along with Brandon Harley. And kind of the matchups you'd expect. Omac and Kashmir have had some great games over the years. I think Omac came in here and kind of stunned Kashmir last year, and they had a pretty good run going as well. And trying to spoil Kashmir's undefeated season so far here tonight. First and ten, Bulldogs. Ball is at their own 42-yard line. Here's the handoff. It's a keeper, actually. Hat maker up the middle. I haven't seen a lot of that out of the uh, Kashmir quarterback, but he gains four on first down, brings up second down and six. Yeah, that was designed the whole way. He took one or two steps and then put his foot to the ground. QB draw. Ball at the 45-yard line. Be second down and seven instead of six. First possession of this second half here in this 21-21 game. Hatmaker, shotgun Zavala in motion. Hand off Peterson up the middle. Lowers his shoulder and then gets another couple yards. So that'll be a gain of about three. Cashmere will face third down and four. Ball just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's, I almost like to say, Brandon, this is probably two down territory. These teams have been going for it on fourth pretty consistently tonight, so I can't see anything but that. But uh, Have we seen a casual punt? Uh, a quick punt, oh, remember, yeah, quick and that hit, was yeah. it, yeah. All right, Hatmaker now on this third down and three, maybe four. Quick pass right side. Zavala gets a great block. What a block on the right side, and it was Trey Smith with that hit and allowed Zavala a nice gain out to the 41-yard line. A really good-looking block there. The broke him free for the first down. Kashmir into OMAC territory now at the 41-yard line. You mentioned just underway third quarter. Zavala moves from right side to the left. Now he comes back to the right side, gets the handoff, looking for blockers, takes his time, then gets wrestled out of bounds at about the 39-yard line, gain of two that time. I do like Zavala's patience in his running. He doesn't get ahead of his lineman, does he, Brandon? Definitely doesn't, and they were running into the boundary, so on that particular one, he didn't have as much uh, acreage to deal with, but when you do that, you do want to slow down a little bit. And for a sophomore, he's got some nice patience, doesn't he? It's fun to see uh, a young player like that. He's on the field. All, I mean, he's, he's been all over the field on offense. So. He really has. Second down and eight now for Kashmir. The ball at the OMAC 38-yard line. Handoff around the right side, slipping as Logan Spees after about a two-yard gain. They're down in about six now for Kashmir. Ball resting at the OMAC 36 and a half yard line. Might be one of the adjustments to Kashmir coaching staff. Both of those runs have been into the boundary, the short side of the field. When most of the runs have been to the wide you side. You know, that's, the first that's half. a great yeah. point. It really is. It's a ball of motion again. Hatmaker fake over the middle, and it's caught by Spees. Got hit hard at about the 28-yard line, but does hold on to it. Devereaux in on the stop for Omak. But that'll be a nice gain of eight yards and enough for a Kashmir first down. So they keep this drive alive. This will be the seventh play of this drive. Kashmir took the second half kickoff and still with possession here. Clock moving, almost nine minutes now left third quarter. Big ball game here in Kashmir. 21-21 our score. 
Hatmaker handoff. Peterson had a little bit of an opening, and I think he's going to end up losing a yard right at the 30-yard line. One of the first players on defense, Joshua Busco, from his linebacker position. Peterson's had some nice runs tonight, Brandon, but he's had a lot for losses tonight, too. Yeah, he's had a lot. That's his 14th carry of the night, and only about a handful have gone for uh, positive it's yards. It's true. One of those was the big one for 33 and a touchdown, but he's had to fight for uh, a lot more on those, uh, those short gains. Second and 11 for the Bulldogs. Hatmaker controls that wide snap this time. It's a keeper, and he takes it down to the 25-yard line, and that'll bring up third down and six. For the Bulldogs right at the Pioneer 25-yard line. Speaking of the, uh, the touchdown play for um, uh, for Peterson, that was the same play you saw there, except for the QB kept it. Little counter, fake fly to the left. Quarterback kept it for the counter to the right. Nice little game for him. Hatmaker didn't keep it a lot on those in the first half, so something maybe was said at halftime that that's there if you do decide to do that. And again, that run is to the field, the boundary side, the short side, so that might be something they're trying to attack. Here we go, Bulldogs on third and seven, and Peterson is going to get nowhere, in fact, maybe to the original line of scrimmage, or should say to the line of scrimmage, and that's a loss of two again Hand for Peterson. Peterson. Brought down by Mullen. It'll bring up fourth down for the Bulldogs. Well, Cashmere's gone for this before, too. Fourth down and 10 here. They convert a fourth and 12, or was that OMAC in the first half? Oh, it, it was Cashmere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they're in that kind of that tweener area again. Well, it really is. Even if you had a good kicker, Brandon, this would be a heck of a kick. Yeah, it's a tough spot for I'm not saying they kicker. don't have a good yeah. kicker, but if you had a kicker that could kick them deep, it's still a risk. Here we go. Fourth down and about 11. Hatmaker stumbles, comes out right side in the flat. Zavala gets away from the tackler and I think has a cashmere first down. Needed to get to the 28 and I think he got there. I should say 18 yard line. Needed 10. Boy, that is going to be awfully close. It looks like they're going to call for a measurement here, our first one tonight, but that is awfully, awfully close. I think he got it, just eyeballing it from here. But this ball is showing off his athleticism again. He was uh, stopped dead to rights there. The OMAC uh, defender wasn't able to corral him in there for a loss, but fought for that. And we'll see how close this is going to be. So impressed with the sophomore. He just got such good presence out there, and he doesn't get panicked like no, you see a lot of young players. You know, when, when you coach, you tell your players one of the first things you got to do if you want to get on the field, you got to know your plays, you got to know your your splits, your formations, your motions. And, and as a sophomore, seeing that much time and doing that well is pretty impressive. Yes, sir. Let's see. Boy, is this close, Brandon. Holy cow. <laughs> Might be able to catch it on our camera. You can see Take on your screen. Ball, Oh, you can see. Oh, they're putting. <laughs> there's a pair. <laughs> oh, boy. That's that's maybe as close as I've seen in a long, long time. Now, some uh, little pushing and shoving between the uh, OMAC teammates down there. Uh, one of their uh, players was uh, chirping a little bit with the white hat. So his teammate was that in the right That could cost day. you another 15 yards yeah. right there. So Cashmere keeps this drive alive. This will be the 11th play of this drive for Cashmere. First down and 10 from the OMAC 18 yard line. The snap, Hatmaker right side. The ball is bobbled and then dropped. The intended receiver, Trey Smith, that time, and that goes incomplete. OMAC was in good position to make that tackle there, so. Better to uh, have it incomplete than a four-yard loss on that play, I guess. Well, this is the longest drive by far we've seen by either team tonight, Brandon. It's almost six minutes on this drive for Cashmere yeah, here in the 11th play. First incomplete pass, and the most of the runs have been in, in bounds. Hatmaker, handoff. Who else? Zavala slips that first tackle, takes a hit, stays on his feet. And is crashed out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. Another gain of six yards for Zavala. Running into the boundary again, and uh, 
he had to make some moves to gain those uh, six, seven yards he got there. And laid a hit on the defensive back there at the end. He's it was. Boy, this kid at 125 pounds, he can take some shots. A little breather on the sideline now as Peterson comes back in. Smith in motion. Hand off Peterson right side. Gets a lead block from Smith. And that springs him into the end zone. 12 yard run by Peterson. And Kashmir back in the lead. What a drive by the Bulldogs. Used up over half of this third quarter on that possession. Six minutes and 18 seconds. That's a pretty impressive drive. Yeah, I didn't see any of that in the first half. No. Very, very uh, methodical move down the field and uh, way to finish it off with an inside run for a touchdown again. There's Blake once again, or I should say, yeah, Blake on for the uh, point after try. Left footer, it's up, and it is good. It's 542, left to go third quarter. Kashmir 28, OMAC 21, back in 60 seconds. The agents of Kennedy Real Estate Group are committed to providing the ideal client experience. We believe in the power of relationships. Why? Because we don't just work here. We live here. From the nonprofits we serve, the parks where we play, and the local businesses we support, our team understands the value of living in the Wenatchee Valley. Let's begin your real estate story. Hi, this is Eric Grandstrom, the NCW Live Channel Sports Director. While the teams are working hard, we're working hard to bring you 20 broadcasts this fall. Over the middle, the ball is caught, and just like that, gets through everybody. And it's Eastmont. To the end zone, touchdown, Eastmont. It's Wenatchee. In five, touchdown. Even Kashmir. Killed by now, it's in. Good maneuver. Red foot, go, 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 go. Right here on your local TV station, the NCW Live Channel. That scoring drive for Kashmir, it's a good one. 13 plays, 59 yards, took six minutes and 18 seconds off the clock. A 12 yard touchdown run by Tyler Peterson. Point after good, and Kashmir now leads it here halfway through the third, 28 21. Landon Baker to kick it off for the Bulldogs. High short kick. Taking it about the 13, dropped and bobbled again and nowhere to go for OMAC. Good coverage downfield by Tom McDevitt, the sophomore for Kashmir, in on that tackle. So can OMAC answer here their the first return. possession of this McDevitt second half? Five minutes, 36 OMAC. seconds on, left to go in the quarter. And OMAC has it at their own 29 yard line. Once again, first time on the field for the OMAC offense here in this third quarter. Bo Sackman stays in at quarterback, the senior in shotgun. Bushko in motion. He settles in the slot. Two receivers left, and that's where Sackman's going to roll. Left side under pressure. Now tries right side under pressure, pointing downfield, directing traffic, and then just wings it. And we might have another late hit on the sideline as Sackman was hit as he threw that football. <coughs> or did he cross the line of scrimmage? Yeah, it's going to be one of those two. Yeah. I... Oh, that's I... a personal foul. Boy, that's the second one, and I believe it's on Prin Fox. The big 255-pound lineman. And that's going to give Omak another 15 yards when you pretty much had him stopped on first down. He was throwing it away at that point. That's too, too bad for the uh, Cavalier defense there. Boy, and that'll definitely improve Omak's situation. It'll take the ball all the way out to the 37-yard line. They haven't had a lot of illegal blocks, not any clips, no holds. They've all been personal fouls here of some sort or another. Yeah, it's the, yeah, the big ones, right? I know. All right, first down and 10, Pioneers, as they are on their own 37-yard line. Low snap, Sackman corrals it. Here's Devereaux left side and nowhere to go. Great tackle and coverage. Adam Thies, a junior, 5'7", 150-pounder in there to make that stop for no gain. We'll bring up second down at 10 for the Pioneers. 
receiver didn't get much help there on the block from his uh, his teammate. He, he really uh, didn't. There was two guys to block. He didn't block either, and uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's a disaster. So second and ten as Omac shuffles their offensive set. Three receivers to the right of Sackman. Now four with one in the slot. Bushko settling in over there. Back to pass, Sackman downfield and a little bit overthrown. A.J. Lawson, and I should say, uh, Tegan Mullen, rather, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up third down. It was cover zero, no safeties back. Every receiver's covered to the DB, so it's the right call. You throw it up to try to make a receiver uh, make a playable ball there, but uh, just too far overthrown. Well, big third down play now coming up for the Pioneers. The ball is at their own 37, third down and 10. Sackman shotgun, empty backfield again. Flings it out in the flat, and that will be enough for a first down. It's Joshua Bushko. Pass completed to Bushko. On the reception, and got about 12 yards, and that is an OMAC first down. That play has worked pretty consistently for the Pioneers tonight. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, quick, easy throw. Let right. receiver get a few yards. Ball right at midfield, 50-yard line, first down and 10, Omak. Sackman looks left, gets away from some trouble, and then flings it towards the direction of Mullen, and that goes incomplete, and that'll bring up second down. Smart in on the pressure. It'll bring up second down for Omak. Cashmere defense with great push up front. Uh, developed him right away. It's lucky to get out of there with an incompletion and not a sack. Brody Larson, one of the players in there, along with a Smart in on that play for the defense in Cashmere, brings up second down at 10. Omak short side of the field. Here's that bunched up formation again. Still five receivers in this set. The handoff goes right side and not much happening over there. In fact, a yard loss on the play and good defense. He, I should say, yeah, there's A.J. Lawson with the tackle. And a loss of two yards on the play. We'll bring up third down and 12 now for Omar. Ball at their own 48. Boy, you got to think this is four down Terry for territory for Omac. They've been going for it on these yeah. fourth and longs all game long. Clock moving, 345 left to go in this quick moving third quarter now. Sackman bass to pass, play action. Flushed out of the pocket, goes right, throws it over the middle of the field. Dangerous pass. Sage Boyd was the intended receiver, and that goes incomplete. And here we go with Omak and a fourth down and about 12. Really good defense on the back end by Cashmere DBs there. All locked up man coverage again, and the quarterback had nowhere to go. Made the smart move, chucked it downfield to take the incompletion. Big fourth down coming up here towards the end of the third quarter. Just a little more than three and a half minutes left. We're throwing that half roll tight end screen the other way a few times. Fake right side. Sackman in trouble, and he is caught back at the 43 yard line. And a good play by the linebacker, and that's number 34, Donald Flick. 6'1, 215 pounder. So Omak turns it over on downs, and once again, going for it like that, Brandon, it gives Cashmere just fantastic field position now in Omak territory at the 47-yard line. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, you got to make a decision at some point whether or not you're going to try to play some defense, pin them back a little bit, but sometimes the coach knows more about, you know, your snapper, your punter, and everything else. Well, that's else. true. That is true. You're on the road, you want to try to... Cashmere now looking for some more points. Took the lead on the last possession. Straight handoff up the middle to Peterson. Gain of one on the play. You know, the stop for Omak, Xavier Cardona. He's had a good game from his defensive line position. Gain of one on the play. Brings up second down and nine. Ball at the Omak 41-yard line. 
at Maker's shotgun. Only a sophomore. Here's Zavala. Handoff instead, though, is Peterson. Tried the middle and then went left side. Still didn't get much more. Maybe another yard. And that's going to bring a third down and eight up for Kashmir now at the OMAC 39 yard line. Scores. Here we go. Uh, third quarter, it's Wenatchee over Davis. 435 left in the third. Or that's fourth quarter. Wenatchee leads Davis 28-14. Is that the Eastmont score? No, I'm not. Okay, 28-14. Eastmont was winning 14-3, I believe, over Skyline into the third quarter. Handoff and nothing doing again. In fact, a loss of about four on that play. Zavala on the carry. Cashmere going backwards yeah. now on this possession. Cashmere going into the boundary. It must be really... Uh, Seen something in half that they can exploit there. Fourth and 11. The ball resting at the OMAC 43-yard line. Kashmir going for it here. Why not? Both teams going for it on fourth down here in this third quarter. Minute 44 left. Hatmaker back to pass. Throwing it deep left side. And just incomplete at the five-yard line. That pass was there. Zavala streaking down that left side, and they almost got it to work, Brandon. Man, that was a great <coughs> pass, just outstretched hands. It's uh, that's is a pretty of a ball as you'll see a high school quarterback throw. So both teams turn it over on downs, and now the Pioneers find themselves with pretty good field position at their own 43-yard line with a minute 38 left to go in this third quarter. I did find an update over from Skyline. He's fought uh, their running back under Peterson just punched in his second touchdown. So they're up 21-3 now on the road over at Skyline. Pretty impressive yeah. for the Wildcats. Good for them. All right, Omac with it. Kashmir jumping offside. And that was big number 77, Prin Fox. So instead of first and 10, it'll be first and five for Omac. Close to midfield. Outside. Crowd a little restless here right now. I think they're a little nervous with this seven-point lead because both teams have shown the ability to punch the other one right in the mouth, and that's what we've seen. But the pace has definitely slowed here, hasn't it, in this it's, third quarter? It's been more intentional this half, for sure. It was a rough snap there. The quarterback Sackman gotta... does grab it. Nice play, and he's going to get a nice gain around the right side oh. and a first down. That'll be a gain of about seven Sackman yards. Keeper around the right side and a first down for the pioneers into Kashmir territory ball will be spotted at the 45 yard line minute 12 left to go here quick third quarter compared to the first two quarters yeah it's, a, it's everything's got a different feel to it this half for it sure. really does that yeah. six minute drive by Kashmir kind of slowed things down a little bit now Omak looking for some points that possibly tie this one up. First down and 10. Sackman, shotgun, the snap, looks middle of the field. Boy, he had his man there. I think the receiver stumbled Bushko a little bit. And it goes incomplete and brings up third down. That's a tough one on the road like that, almost in the fourth quarter against a very, very tough opponent, man. That's a play you got to have. The boy had hit him right in the hands right there. Can't blame Sackman on that pass. So it's second down and 10, not third down. Ball still at about the 46 yard line of Kashmir. Omak very deliberate on this offensive set. Playcock down to six seconds. Sackman and shotgun. Gets the snap. Big rush by the Bulldogs. Wide open receiver left side. And a nice gain. It's Mason Fletcher on the reception. It's going to be marked down at the 35-yard line. So a nice gain of 11 on second down for the Pioneers. And they've got something cooking now at the Kashmir 35-yard line. OMAC coaching staff's pretty hot. Their quarterback took a pop a little bit after he threw it there. They were looking for that fat, that flag there. This has been a physical game, yeah, hasn't it? That, that's what I expected. Driving down here tonight, it was the one thing I thought it would be for sure was physical. First and 10, Pioneers in Kashmir territory at the 35. Maybe a false start here. No, it's going to be a defensive offside on Kashmir. 
That'll bring up another first down and five for Omak and put the ball at the Kashmir 30-yard line. You're protecting a lead. You sure don't want to give them yards at this stage of the game. That's for sure. Nothing free for sure in the fourth quarter. Uh, well, we're 21 seconds away from the fourth quarter. And a tight game like this. So first down at five for Omak. Three receivers split out right side. Two to the left. We've seen this all night long from the Pioneers. With Sackman in a empty backfield. Sackman looks right, trying to get away from some defenders, and he is not going to get away from Josh Maros, the 6'2", 210-pound Bulldog linebacker. And that's a loss of about four back almost to the original line of scrimmage. will bring up second down and nine. Good defense by the Bulldogs there, and that will end our third quarter of play. Got a good one here on the NCW Life Channel for you tonight. Caribou Trail League matchup. It's Kashmir 28 and OMAC 21. Fourth quarter coming your way in 60 seconds. Like most backseat drivers, I'm all about safety. Uh-oh. Les Schwab Tires is too. Because Les Schwab fixes brakes, steering, and more. See those guys? They just do tires. Eyes ahead, Dad. Look, I'm not telling people how to do their job. Blinker. I'm just glad Les Schwab puts my safety first. Watch. They're going to come greet me. Les Schwab Tires. Doing the right thing since 1952. Eight different political campaigns, 16 candidates, three cities deciding their future. NCW Life wants you to be informed when you cast your ballot in this November's election. That's why we're sitting down with candidates across the ballot for mayor, city council, and school board to talk through the issues and help you make the best choice. Look for those interviews right here on this channel starting October 22nd and on our website, ncwlife.com. Tonight's broadcast also brought to you by Les Schwab. Les Schwab takes your safety seriously every time you stop by. Second down and nine, Pioneers at the Kashmir 34-yard line. Just underway, fourth quarter. Great to have you along. Grant Olson along with Brandon Harley tonight. Shotgun, Sackman rolls to his left, looks left, has a receiver open. Catches it at about the 18 and wrestled down at the 16-yard line. Boy, just like that, a gain of 18 on that play for Omak. And a first down now deep into Kashmir territory at the 15-yard line. Omak not giving up without a fight. That's for really sure, good looking play. That a was out to the left. That that double uh, uh, set there where the inside receivers finds a hole in the zone and Sackman found him there for that nice game. All right, first and 10. Trips this time are split out to the right side for Omak. Two on the short side of the field left. Sackman empty backfield. Here's the handoff by the motion man. Wide receiver. Little sweep that time to the 12-yard line. Bushko, gain of three yards. with the stop. That'll bring up second down and seven now. 11-32, just underway, fourth quarter in a one-touchdown game. It's Kashmir 28, OMAC 21. OMAC get a first down at about the Kashmir five-yard line. Here's Sackman, plenty of time, and then time runs out as number nine, A.J. Lawson. The senior with the sack, and that'll be a loss all the way back to the 20-yard line. So a loss of about eight yards on that play. Coming off their right edge there, the, the left side of the Bulldog defense untouched. Man, he didn't even see him. Looked like he had time just momentarily, you're right. Yeah. All right, third and 15 now for Omak. The ball is back at the Kashmir 20-yard line. Sackman back to pass pressure again gets it off is it complete may have been better served to drop that one as that is another huge loss all the way back to the 29 yard line and a loss of nine on that play 
Yeah, that's all oh, they did call him. Uh, they did the call him down, I guess, before he. I think he did it. catch it and then he oh, was he down. Did. Yeah. Boy, he'd have been better off dropping that. Yeah, that's I for did. sure. Boy, as uh, aggressive as the Kazmir defensive front is, if Fomac has any kind of a screen here, that might be a, a really good call. But. I don't think they've shown that much. This, uh, Fourth and 23 now for the Pioneers. Under pressure as Sackman gets it off, but just throws it away. Omak wants another late hit on that sideline as Sackman's slow to get up over there. It's incomplete. And for the second consecutive possession here in the second half, Omak has turned it over on downs to Kashmir. Kashmir again has pretty good field position this time up to the 28 yard line Boy nothing uh, Kashmir would like more than about a six minute drive right here Brandon and a touchdown 947 left Had a yeah. good sustained drive Good to Kashmir. Oh, that's what you want. You want to stay in bounds Run the ball move the chains. Just keep it Inside your own game here. Nothing else. Zavala handoff right side nowhere to go at least at first and then is stopped up for a loss of about two yards a host of omac defenders in on that play and that'll be just a loss of one pretty favorable spot at that time for cashmere that could have been worse of all they did have one 10 yard run earlier in the third quarter but other than that they've kept him in check on the run game in this half but again, they ran him. Well, that, I guess at that time it was a little bit to the wide side of the field. So not as much room to run when you're always running to the boundary. Boy, that's right, too. Second and 11 for the Bulldogs. And off right side. Good hole over the right side. Flag comes down. Hand off to Peterson. Hand off to Peterson. And we'll see if this will hold or not. Ran with the tackle. Flag on the field. All the way up to the 45 yard line. Gain of 18 if it stands. It is a hold. It is a hold on Kashmir. Must have been on a receiver that came all the way from the back judge. You usually don't see a holding call from the, the back end of the right. defense unless it's a, a receiver. And it was right in the vicinity of that Peterson run. Right. Yeah. Good hard run. He got through the first level there, the front the offensive line before he uh, needed to have any help there. Holding the Bulldogs. So instead of a first down and a 15 or 18 yard gain, this is second and nine for the Bulldogs now at their own 30 yard line. 8.58 left in the game. And Kashmir clinging to this seven point lead, 28-21. Under center this time, Hatmaker, the handoff to Peterson. Handoff to Peterson. Gets a couple, make it three yards up to about the 31 yard line. The Peterson's stone. getting some positive yards, but they are tough ones here in every the second yard. half. Yeah, he's had to fight for every off. yard. Boy, he has. That was his 19th carry tonight. Holy cow. Third down and eight for the Bulldogs. Up by seven at their own 31 yard line. Big third down right here for both teams. Smith in motion, fake handoff, play action over the middle. There's the tight end. And once again, it's smart, I believe. It is Dalen Smart, or Dalen Smart, excuse me. Down. Up to the 40 yard line. Just what the Bulldogs needed to keep this drive alive. Now up at the 40, clock moving, 746 left to go. Just Look what they wanted right, right here, Brandon. The quarterback right up under center now. They're, they're trying to eliminate any mistakes, bad snaps, so they're going under center more. Handoff, Peterson right up the middle. Nice gain on first down of five yards up to the 45 yard line. Kashmir continuing to burn this clock. Now under seven and a half minutes left. Boy, a touchdown here for Kashmir is going to make it awfully difficult for Omak. His time is 
dwindling here in the fourth and Omak hasn't had a lot going on offense yet this second half Hand off Peterson first down and more across the 45 down to the 40 yard line and That's and another that nice gain for Peterson by About 15, 14 yards on that carry and a first down for Kashmir Ball will be spotted right at the 40 Just the kind of drive you wanted here if you're casual. You're taking three minutes off the clock already, and you want more off this game clock. Yeah, they're going to run that play clock down, get it under 10 seconds. Once again, Hatmaker under center. Smith in motion. Same play. Why not, Peterson? It's like we're going to run this until you stop us. <laughs> or we're going to keep running at you anyway. That's every time, they must have a lot of faith in the right side of the line. Most of those runs. Going off the right side. They'll still keep that uh, fly guy motion. Uh, keep the back to the right side of the, the, the all over the, the yeah. right guard and Brody Larson, the right tackle, 280 and 235 on that right side. There you go. Second down and nine for Kashmir. And a flag flies. Whistles sound. I don't think the play has been stopped yet. It should be the referee signaling it. It's a jump ball down at about the two yard line and it's caught at the one. What a catch down there. It's Karen Wilkinson, Cade Wilkinson rather, the senior. But will it stand as a flag flew? And I think it's on Kashmir. What a play, yeah, pure and simple jump ball. I saw the side judge motion that the play was dead at one point before the that's snap. That's what they're calling it, right? Yeah, it's a legal shift. Well, the play should have been dead yeah. long ago then. That's on the white hat, he should have had that done. It's unfortunately, yeah, I think some of the OMAC guys had stopped. I think so too. Well too. So Kashmir will be moved back. What a great catch by Wilkinson down at the goal line. Pre-snap, Kashmir has its uh, shifts and motions, and uh, I think they didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage. Well, that takes the ball back to about the OMAC 45-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and 14. Kazmir, two receivers left side, one to the right. Hatmaker back in shotgun now. Zavala fake is to him. Hatmaker's going to keep it right up the middle of the field, getting some help from his lineman. Gets stopped at the 35 yard line, and that'll be a nice gain of 10 yards and get a lot of that back and bring up now a third down and short. Well, bring that third down and about eight, rather. Now, now we're putting it in the right spot, about third and five. And again, they're in that territory too. I don't think, well, they did a quick kick early in the game. Maybe uh, they want to make Omak try to earn it, but. I'm thinking this is four down territory yeah. with the clock moving like this and your defense has been playing pretty well here in the right. second half. We'll see, might not need it. And another flag. Now this one's, uh, this might be encroachment though. Yeah, they, well, it's casual celebrating there. They Outside, had a there. Omak. I don't know, that's enough to get in the first. Boy, that is going to be right at that first down marker, Brandon. I'll tell you what, right at it. Not a foot short. Boy, let's bring up third and short. Now there's really no question. It's four down territory for Kashmir. We are under five minutes left to go. Kashmir what? just have some personnel in there, some bigger guys, and they did show a sneak earlier. Third and about a foot for Kashmir. Hatmaker looked like he was in a little bit of trouble and found a hole over the right side. That was actually Trey Smith. Oh, it was Smith. Yeah. You're right. And that's yeah. a bulldog. Needed a yard, got about three on that play. And that's a good possession for Kashmir. Now the ball is at the 28 yard line. First down and 10 Bulldogs. That's what they needed. They're going to continue to milk this clock. Five minutes and 12 seconds so far on this possession. 
but that's what good teams do, right? Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. It's kind of a cliche, but you know, you assert your will. That's do right. What you want to do when you're a good team. This is what's happening. Hat maker, he is going to keep it this time. Not much around the right side between the right guard and tackle again. Brought down by Arroyo. I think he's going to be spotted right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on first down. Brings up second down and 10 now. So we're under four minutes now, Brandon. Omak, when do you start calling timeout? <laughs> you know, I know it's a little early now, but. Cashmere is yeah. just methodically moving it down the field. A drive that started at their own 28-yard line. Handoff, or I should say, quick pass. Quick pass to Spees over the left side. He gets down to the 22-yard line. It's a gain of six. Yeah, they bunched him in tight. They keep uh, packing the box, and he gave him a little quick little shot there. Get a, it's an extended handoff. Not a, it's a pretty safe play for this point of the game. And staying in bounds, Bulldogs yes. so far on this possession. Third down and four now. Clock moving. 3-12 left. And the Pioneers may be running out of time here in Kashmir. Matt Baker shotgun. Peterson in the backfield behind him. There's Zavala in motion. Handoff Peterson. He's going to take it outside. Went inside instead. Crosses the 20. With the Close to a first down. Gain of about three, and that will bring fourth down and a yard now coming up for Kashmir. Omak continuing to let this clock move. Two and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. You're a hat maker right now. You wait till about five seconds yeah. to snap this ball. We've got a whistle. Here's your timeout from uh, Omax. Well, I was wondering. I think they kind of wasted some time here, but I'm not the coach. Two minutes, 21 seconds left to go fourth quarter. We'll take a timeout, too. Our score, Kashmir 28, Omax 21. We're back in 30 seconds. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned, and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Highlander Golf Course and Grill. Plan your next tournament and event today. Call the Pro Shop today to schedule your time on the full swing S4 widescreen golf simulators. Give the Highlander a call, 509-884-4653. Two minutes, 21 seconds left to go here in the fourth quarter. Kashmir has it, fourth down. And a yard, the ball is at the OMAC 20-yard line. Big, big play right here. This could be the ball game, really. Zavala in motion. Comes back right side, the pitch wow. instead. Nice play to the tight end. It's smart as he gets wrestled out. That'll be a first down for Kashmir. That was an interesting call and an interesting play. First down. Yeah, a little surprised that they did a pitch like that on such a short yardage play. Trying Everybody to expecting Zavala to get it. Instead, the tight end gets it on a pitch play, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs. The ball is at the OMAC 19-yard line. Make it the 14-yard line. First down at 10, Kashmir. Fake to Zavala. Hatmaker's gonna, I should say, that's Trey Smith on the keeper. Smith with the keeper. As he dips in inside the 10 yard line. Now they'll mark it right at the 10. Gain of about four brings up second down and six. Just got a final from Yakima. The Panthers uh, were 28 14 over Davis. Nice win for Wenatchee.
Second down for the Bulldogs. Six yards to go here. Late, late in this fourth quarter. A minute and a half left to go. Now it's Hatmaker. Looked for a block left side. Didn't get it from Logan Spees. And Hatmaker with the keeper. Hatmaker down right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Garcia with the tackle. We'll bring up third down for the Bulldogs. Minute 24 left. I believe Omak calls their second timeout now. The Bulldogs can get a first down. Down inside here. They don't have to score. They but can. They, they get it at to. what about the four yard line, it looks like. Yeah, if they get that first down, it's game over. Game it might over. be anyway. I think Omak waited just a little bit too long to start calling their timeouts, but you never know, I guess. But yeah, it's a risk. You gamble. You're hoping your defensive line can get a stop for you, and then you can work with it. But this has been a fantastic Caribou Trail League yeah. football game here tonight. And you can't take anything away from Omak. They came in here ready to fight, and they played a heck of a game. That's for sure. Two very different halves, for sure. Yeah, it was kind of a wide open first half, and then ball control second half, wasn't it? One touchdown, I think, as Omak had the had two possessions is that right. in the entire second half. So. That's pretty amazing. Third down and six for the Bulldogs. The ball is at the Omak 10 yard line. Cashmere needs to get down to the Pioneer four yard line. Trey Smith in there, quarterback, loses the football, and Omak comes up with it. How about that? After a long, almost eight minute and 30 second drive, the second turnover of the game for Cashmere, and now it's all up to the Bulldog defense to secure this win with a minute 19 left to go in the fourth quarter. They started out that drive with the quarterback under center quite a bit, and I, for that very reason, I believe they were trying to protect the ball, and you know, it's getting a little cooler right now. The field's probably a little more damp. And right. So Omak has 83 yards to travel in a minute 19. The Pioneers down by a touchdown, 28-21. Sackman. Back to pass under pressure, still under pressure. That could be a grounding penalty, and boy, it should be. Get it back to and it will be. That's a loss of down too, right, Brandon? Yeah, yeah, they did throw the flag. Yeah, so I think that was pretty obvious call there. Now what Omak was open for here on their first play with, boy, little time left on the clock. A minute 11 now left. We can with the stop there. Playing on the field. Good pressure by Cashmere again. I think that's kind of been the difference in this second half is the defensive line and linebackers have put a lot of pressure on Sackman here in the third and fourth quarter. Definitely right, but, you know, the, again, I, Omak doesn't have a lot of depth on the bench. They only have about 10 guys over there. The linemen are playing both ways all game. Cashmere's got a few more bodies on the sidelines. They're running in some players. And, well, I, and that does make a difference, I, too. I, you know, you know, as the game goes on, and definitely the long drives of the Cashmere offense in the second half, Omak defensive line is their offensive line, and they had to be on the field a lot. So as the referees again figure out the spot here, there's a minute 11 left. Cashmere once again clinging to a one touchdown lead, 28-21. Omak has the ball. Well, I'm not sure, Brandon. I hate to be critical, but I don't think I've ever seen officials take so long to figure out where to spot a ball as I have in this game tonight. <laughs> it's been pretty unbelievable. I've had this group. Well, we've had this group one at you a few times, so it's not too surprising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to a coach. I forgot yeah. <laughs> about that. I, we've, uh, I believe it's Dennis is the white hat, and uh, in the uh, 20 years that I was on the sidelines with uh, the Panther staff, he was... He was out there quite a bit. But to his credit, he does want to try to get it right. So he will consult with uh, the rest of the team. All right, they bring the uh, down markers all the way across the field. There you go. 
I have no idea why that happened. Uh, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> they bring it across to see if he made it across the line of scrimmage, the ball. I, I Yeah, I don't know what they did. Because the ball has to make it to the line of scrimmage, right? right? right. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. But I, I mean, that's the side judge has got that call too. So looks like they're finally ready to step it off here as the official goes back, and it's going to be placed. It looks like at about the 11 yard line. It's a loss of down. He signaled too. So so it will be a loss of down with the intentional grounding. And that should bring up what second down then, right? It's second and 20. Is that what I'm looking at here? He's, he's signaling for the... The down marker says the, first, yeah, but it, it should he's, be second. He's signaling for it, so... There it is. There it is, second down. Yeah, it looks like about 17 or 18 to go. Ball is on the 11. Casper bringing a little more pressure off the edge here. Shotgun out in the flat left side. It's caught out there, stays inbounds, and a nice tackle. The completion to Tegan Mullen. And that'll be a gain back almost to the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about six. And it'll bring up third down and about 11 for the Pioneers. That's Mullen's first catch of the second half. And there's a timeout. This time it's called by Kashmir with 49 seconds remaining. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by our friends at Kennedy Real Estate Group. They're more than selling houses. They're building communities. Buy in or selling, call the Kennedy Real Estate Group online at kennedygroup.com. And by Sangster Motors, family owned and operated, home of the all new electric Hummer pickup and SUV. And also by Save Mart, shop smart, shop local, serving the Wenatchee Valley since 1962. Final from the west side, Eastmont knocks off Skyline by a final of 21. To three, and that may be the most quality win of the year for Eastmont so far. That's definitely one that they won with that RPI. Uh, the RPI actually, as the season goes on, is much more important. But they still have to take care of business in their crossover game week ten with uh, whoever they end up matching up with in the Columbia Basin League. So that's a huge win for the Wildcats in their program. Coach Don had those guys ready to go. Good for them. Huge win for Eastmont. Cashmere trying to sock away this homecoming win here tonight. OMAC facing a third down in 11. Ball at their own 17 yard line. Low snap, Sackman corrals it. Gets away from some pressure. Still lots of pressure from the Bulldogs. Sackman has to get it away. And did he get it to the line of scrimmage again? It was tipped, I think. That's why he doesn't get it called, yeah. And it goes incomplete any way you look at it. And that'll bring up fourth down. And a last gasp effort for the OMAC Pioneers here with 38 seconds remaining. Boy, the difference, Brandon, I said it earlier in this second half has been pressure by the defense of Kashmir, I think. Yeah, they've been relentless. It's Yeah, that's as much as the first half was about offense, this half has been really about being physical on defense. Crowd getting into it here at Kashmir. Fourth down and 11. This is the game right here. Long drifting pass left side and it's picked off by Trey Smith. And that will do it for the Bulldogs. Kind of a wing and a prayer, hope and a prayer there for OMAC and good coverage by the Bulldogs. Once again, good pressure on Sackman, the quarterback, and Trey Smith, who's played an outstanding game tonight for uh, Kashmir, comes up with that interception. Might be his second tonight, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, Sackman's had two interceptions, and I think both of them have gone to Trey Smith. Kashmir fans getting into it tonight as Kashmir will move to 7-0 and on this season. The sixth-ranked team at 1A football in the state of Washington. And OMAC will fall to 3-4. And, and I'm telling you what, Brandon, they seem like a lot better 3-4 and four ball club. That's for sure. Yeah, they go on a road. Road game against the number six team in the state. You're one of your big CTL rivals. And you'll punch for punch with them to the very end. I mean, it's 21-21 at half. And you, you fight it to the end and you lose by one. 
That was a toughie, and that's going to do it. The clock is going to run out, and the Kashmir Bulldogs win their homecoming game of 2023, beating the OMAC Pioneers by a final score of 28 to 21. We will take a two-minute timeout. We'll come back for the post-game show with stats and more as Caribou Trail coverage continues here on the NCW Life Channel. This is Grace, and this is her world record holding guinea pig with an iconic name, Abby. She currently holds the Guinness World Record for the highest bar jump by a guinea pig. I ride horses and I jump, so I kind of thought it'd be interesting to teach my guinea pig to jump like my horse does. One day she came out of her room and looked at us and I said, did you get it? And she said, yeah, we got it. After we won our award, we came to Abby's to celebrate. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dix Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. We understand that buying and selling is more than a transaction, and it's more than just a house. This is where you will gather with friends and family, and where a lifetime of memories will be made. But buying a home is more than memories. Oftentimes, it's your biggest financial decision. The agents at Kennedy Group understand this and provide real estate advice based on your goals and dreams. Call us today, and let's find your happy place. Tonight's broadcast also brought to you by Together For Youth, encouraging you to dispose of unused and expired prescriptions to protect youth and the environment. Find a kiosk near you by visiting medproject.org. And boy, it was quite a game here at Kashmir tonight. The OMAC Pioneers coming to town. OMAC comes out on fire, scoring on their first two possessions to take an early 14 to nothing lead. Then Kashmir storms back with three touchdowns of their own to take a 21-14 lead. Obak scores late in the uh, second quarter on a three-play 85-yard drive, and that tied us up 21-21 at halftime. And, boy, for the, as far as the second half goes, Obak could do nothing on offense, turned it over on downs a couple of times and threw an interception while Kashmir on their first possession in the second half Went 13 plays, 59 yards, took 6 minutes and 18 seconds on the clock. It was a 12-yard run by Peterson, and that made the score 28-21. to Kashmir had another long, long drive late in the fourth quarter that ended in a fumble, and then Omak could not move it down the field to try and score, tie this score up. So Kashmir finishes with a 28 to 21 victory. Hey, coming up, the lots of sports on the NCW Life Channel this week. Coming up on Tuesday, October 17th, volleyball action here on the NCW Life Channel. It'll be Davis at Wenatchee. Eric Brandstrom will have that call live at 7 o'clock. And then next Friday, Brandon and I will be at the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee as the Panthers host Sunnyside. Pre-game 6.30, kickoff at 7 o'clock. And then the following Tuesday, October 24th, we have soccer for you. It's Moses Lake at Wenatchee, Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisen on the call for that. And coverage begins at 7 p.m. We'll take another 60 time, second time out. We'll come back and wrap things up from Kashmir right after this. Hey, man. How's your arm? Uh, getting better, actually, thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions, and that ibuprofen's a good option for me. The risk of addiction is not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. 
don't share your prescriptions, and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids. Meet the Move Meter from Coldwell Banker. Just enter any two cities and see how a potential move scores based on cost of living and more. Let's make your dream place a reality. Get your body moving. Tune in for Vibrant Motion, featuring low-impact aerobics hosted by Connie Townsend. These workouts are great for all ages. Vibrant Motion brought to you by the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center, weekdays on the NCW Life Channel. Brad Olson and Brandon Harley back at Bulldog Field at Cashmere High School. The fireworks are now sounding off here at homecoming. It's the king, a football player. Wilkerson was finally announced as the king here at Cashmere High School, and that's followed by a fireworks show that you see right there on your screen. Brandon, how are we looking for final game stats? For the OMAC Pioneers, they had a pretty quiet second half. Uh, quarterback Bo Sackman ended up being 10 of 32 for 183 yards, touchdown and two interceptions. He ended up running 11 times for a total of 100 yards and two touchdowns there. Uh, the other leading rusher for OMAC was Joshua Busco. He only had five carries for 18 yards. And their leading receiver was Tegan Mullen. He had four catches for about 110 yards. For the Cashmere Bulldogs, a very quiet second half, but very dominant by both, uh, both sides of the ball. They finished with uh, Rylan Hatmaker at 13 of 18 for 136 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. He rushed eight times for 28 total yards. And the workhorse for most of the second half, Tyler Peterson, he ended up with 24 carries and 62 very hard oh, yards. Man. Half of those came on that first uh, first half counter touchdown uh, run. He ended up with two touchdowns. Isaac Zavala, who was all over the field, was 15 for 106 in his uh, uh, rushing. And he also had four catches for 16 yards and a touchdown. Logan Spees, the big tight end, had four catches for 36. And Dalen Smart, Dalen Smart had three catches for 50 yards and a touchdown. I like the way they used the tight end tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, it was very... Uh, um, Game plan very well to use them right when they needed them. And Tyler Peterson, 64 total yards. He had one 33-yard run, so 23 carries for 32 yards. The, essentially, yeah, yeah. essentially the rest of the game, and that's yeah. what you call a workhorse. Right. That's for sure. He, uh, I mean, it's not how many yards you gain. It's sometimes it's what kind of yards. In that second half, man, he helped keep that clock rolling for sure. Well, he really did. All right, as the fireworks continue to fire off here at Cashmere High School. That will do it for our coverage here on the NCW Life Channel. We'd like to thank Dan Kuntz and all of his crew. Just a fantastic job here once again. And also I'd like to thank Matthew back at the studios in Wenatchee at our NCW Life headquarters. Thank you to everyone for making this a great broadcast. And thank you for being here with us tonight as well. Once again, our final score, Cashmere 28 and OMAC 21. For Brandon Harley, I'm Grant Olson. Hoping you have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you again soon. Good night, everyone. Devereaux is going to pass. No, it's Bishop in there now. Tonight's coverage of live local sports has been brought to you by Abby's Pizza, Alpine Air, Apple Valley Honda, Biosports Physical Therapy, Clean Air Connection, Coldwell Banker Cascade, Confluence Health, Dick's Heating and Air Conditioning, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, Highlander Golf Course and Grill, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, and Together for Youth. Thanks for joining us for live coverage of local sports on the NCW Life Channel. We now return you to normal programming already in progress. That'll be it for the night as the Wenatchee Panthers.